As we reach the quarter pole in the NFL season, it's an early season battle for first place in the NFC South between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen. I'll be joined by Tim Ryan and Chris Myers in just a moment. The injury story could play a big role in today's game. For the Carolina Panthers, their starting quarterback, Jake DeLome, who's off to his best start of his career, is out with a sprained elbow. Their starting middle linebacker, Dan Morgan, out with a leg injury. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, defensive end Greg Spires, who was questionable all week, will play. But Brian Kelly, their starting quarterback, is out. How it impacts on today's game, let's go to the sidelines. Start with Carolina and Tim Ryan. All right, Sam, I am down here with the Panthers, and there is no doubt they're shorthanded today, but certainly more prepared to absorb an injury at the quarterback position than ever before. Enter David Carr, and he comes into this game with some solid credentials. He was the number one overall pick of the NFL draft in 02. He's got 75 starts at the helm, and, and heck, he'll be throwing the football to Steve Smith, and historically, Stevie Smith has just roasted the Tampa Bay Bucks. Also, Sammy should have a solid running game to lean on when you look at what the Panthers have done on the ground. Deshaun Foster, D'Angelo Williams, both off to a good start. In particular, Deshaun, he has been red hot the first couple of games of the season. For something on the Bucks, let's go across the field. Here's Chris Myers. All right, thanks, Tim. And as you can see over here, Cadillac Williams uh, beaming with confidence despite what happened last week. In fact, the entire Buck team, even though they've lost seven of their last eight here against the Carolina Panthers, they are confident because they have Jeff Garcia. Monty Kiffin says we've never had a quarterback in Tampa who exudes the kind of confidence even on our defense. Guys rally around the way that he plays. John Gruden says he's a guy who can revitalize a franchise. Garcia's already done that here. Garcia calls Gruden a mad scientist but says he's in the offensive coordinator meetings with the quarterbacks. He he calls the plays. I understand his passion for success. He says this offense, Garcia says, has just barely scratched the surface, and they'll have to scratch and claw today, Sam, against the Carolina Panthers. You're right about that. Thanks, Chris. And Jeff Garcia can appreciate great moments in the NFL. Brett Favre setting the all-time record for touchdown passes today. We could have some great moments in this one. It's a battle for first place. The Panthers and the Bucks are set to go. We'll be right back. Just a beautiful day here in Charlotte. It's perfect. Low 80s temperature, beautiful blue, blue sky, great sunshine. This is just a great day. Mark Jones deep for Tampa Bay who will receive. Carolina has lost their last three home games, one this season. Tampa Bay has lost nine of their last 10 road games, one this season. Now, they'll tell you this is a different Tampa Bay team led by Jeff Garcia at quarterback, Sam. Jason Baker, the line drive kickoff, bounces down, grabbed by Michael Clayton. Clayton, a big wide receiver, gets back up to the 29 yard line. And the Bucs started off. Jeff Garcia who has had a great start to the season, has not thrown an interception, two touchdown passes, and look at the completion percentage, better than 66%. He's been a, he has been the wild card, the X factor in this huddle. They, they have not had a guy like this, maybe forever, when you look at the quarterback position, just the tenacity and the competitiveness and the passion that Jeff Garcia brings to the quarterback spot. John Wade is his center. And they started off with Cadillac Williams picking up about five, maybe six on the play. Ken Lucas, the cornerback, makes the stop. Cadillac Williams fumbled the ball last week, was pulled late in the game in the fourth quarter. Ernest Graham came in, but what John Gruden said is he's our guy. And it looks like he's reduced the size of that flak jacket he had on last week. Off the play fake, Garcia rolling and finds Ike Henry. Hilliard, who's playing on a sore ankle and missed a couple of days of practice, makes the grab up near midfield. And that was rhythm and, and the passing game and the tempo. This team is right out of the huddle into the snap. They're trying to up the tempo, and that's just a good little second-level route by Ike Hilliard. I'll, I expect him all day to attack the middle part of that defense. Let's remember, Dan Morgan is not starting in the right. football game today. It's James, An An James Anderson, number 50 at linebacker. They're young with Beast in the first-round pick. Expect a lot of stuff in the middle of the field through the air. Michael Pittman in motion. Short drop by Garcia. Short throw to Ike Hilliard. Breaks a tackle. Gets inside the 40 and down close to the 35-yard line. Good fast start 
by Jeff Garcia. He wanted a faster start on offense than they've had in recent games. And look at the move down the field. And I, I would expect that they'll lean heavily on that offensive line, both in the run and the pass. You know, the offensive line has been terrific over the last couple of games. And if you couple that with the fact that Carolina up front, they've got two sacks through three games. I think Jeff Garcia is going to, at least coming into the game, thinks that he's going to be very comfortable sitting in the pocket. Got yeah, like Williams straight ahead. Lee Cooper in on the stop as Cadillac gets down to close to the 31 yard line. You remember last week, Cadillac Williams had the big flak jacket on to protect those ribs that he hurt in week one. Looks like he's got something back there, but certainly it's a reduced size than what he had last week, which caused a fumble or two. Hurry up offense as they move it now. Garcia steps back, changes the play. Second and seven. Williams trying to cut inside. It's right down to the 30-yard line. Julius Peppers tripped him up. Well, here I'll tell you who makes this this play. It's Chris Jenkins. Watch big number 77 right here, and just watch him just plow through here and take John Wade, take him about three yards in the backfield, which forces Carnell Williams to widen, which is going to allow the pursuit to get there for a minimal game. Chris Jenkins can do that all day long when he's got his motor cranked up. Jenkins comes out as Carolina brings in five defensive backs, three wide receivers for Tampa Bay with Cadillac Williams and Michael Pittman in the backfield. And jumping across was Brig Damian Lewis. Let's see if there was motion. Garcia says it's against Tampa, against Carolina. Our referee today is Pete Morelli in his 11th year, a high school principal from Stockton, California, St. Mary's High School to be exact. Defense, neutral zone infraction, number 90. Five-yard penalty. Result of the penalty is a first down. Julius Peppers jumps across. It costs Carolina five yards and a first down for the Bucks at the Carolina 25-yard line. Good drive which started on the Tampa Bay 29 and you can already see peppers and some of the guys on that defense are sucking wind a little bit the tempo has been upbeat to say the least here on the first drive by Tampa Bay BJ ask you back in splits out now emotions Garcia swings it out to Cadillac Williams who drops it Chris Gamble was there Cadillac should have had it John Gruden, as Chris Myers alluded to, the mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how mad you have to be with you come into the game and you into our meetings yesterday and you tell us that Cadillac Williams is, is your bell cow, and rightly yeah. so. You know, I know a bunch of Bucks fans are sitting at home wondering, wait, well, Ernest Graham lit it up last week. Well, 24 right there is the guy that they're going to lean on all season long. Hopefully they'll get him his 25 carries today. Three wide receivers in. Clayton motions left. Alex Smith sets to the right. Quickly out to Alex Smith and a good tackle. Chris Gamble comes up, took him down just across the 25. Good play by Gamble. This Carolina defense really struggled last week against Atlanta. They gave up a lot of yardage to Joey Harrington. Well, yeah, the they Falcons. were very good. Missed tackles. Chris Gamble had a couple. John Fox told us on, on Friday, he says, our defense, there is no question we haven't hit our stride. The splash plays aren't there. It all starts up front. The pass rush has been almost non-existent. Therefore, they haven't had any picks. Not a lot of turnovers. They got to get it going. Three wide receivers in. Third and nine for the Bucks. Everybody out. Garcia finds Ike Hilliard. And Hilliard goes to the ground. The ball popped loose. He got it up for the first down. They rule him down. The line judge pointing to the ground says he was down and he's got enough for the first down and Jeff Garcia likes the likes I can oh, trust I kill you. I think all of them can and he just sat down in the little zone gamble got behind him and laid out for that first down. Let's see if yeah clearly the ground cannot cause a fumble can cause an incompletion can't cause a fumble he was down before that ball popped out and John Gruden was saying I can the best player he's ever coached well, I think a, a lot of them just off the field stuff in the meeting room he said he's just been terrific Stanley McClover in number 74 on defense for the Panthers Cadillac Williams gets down to the 10 yard line McClover came over to make the tackle McClover the second year defensive end out of Auburn 
in at the right defensive end, replacing Michael Rucker. He's going to take it to the right side here, just a lead. Watch B.J. Askew try to get up and lead into the hole. Good, good penetration there by the defensive tackles. Tenth play of this drive for the Bucks. Second and five. Damian Lewis in a defensive tackle for Carolina. Garcia gets time. Going short. I Hilliard again. I Hilliard down at the three yard line. His fourth catch on this drive. James Anderson made the tackle. And I think you have an idea of what Carolina wants to do defensively. Look at this. Look at that whole line of defenders right there. They're just going to build a wall, hopefully Number keep everything in front of them, and then come up and make the tackle. And smart by Hilliard there to get enough and get past the first down sticks, first and goal. Donald Penn, an offensive lineman, is eligible on the right side. It's first and goal for the Bucks. Garcia still has it. He was looking for Askew, the fullback. Garcia takes it in. Touchdown. That was supposed to be a pass to the fullback, but B.J. Askew stumbled out of the backfield, and Garcia takes it in himself. What happened was he got clipped by a defender and then was still wide open. And Garcia, what happened is he saw one of the defenders converging on B.J. Askew after, in fact, he did get tripped up and then decided to throw that little pump fake a la Brett Favre, cut back against the grain and fired into the end zone for a touchdown. What an opening drive for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers six minutes 17 seconds first time that Jeff Garcia has scored a touchdown since 2005 that's, that's, that's what Jeff Garcia can do with his leg right there. You watch he's just gonna look he's got him there now the defenders converging watch him cut against the grain right by Julius Peppers for a touchdown 71 yard opening That was a tough one for Carolina. Now, 11 plays, and they hammered him both with the run and the pass. I kill you, did a bunch of stuff on that drive and kind of hit him right where we expected it to. The slot receiver, you think about that, he's going to have a big impact on the middle part, middle level of the defense, where they're a little shorthanded at linebacker. They took advantage of it, as you said, four for I kill you. Matt Bryan kicks it off. Nick Goings is deep, three yards deep, and he takes a knee. So it's been a good start for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Everything going right offensively. Garcia's got it going. Five for six passing and a rushing touchdown. Key ingredients in that touchdown drive for the Bucs. Mike Hilliard and Cadillac Williams. Hilliard with a sore ankle before the game came running out. He said, I'm going in this. This is a big game, even if I'm not 100%. And one of the players on offense said Cadillac had his best week of practice this year. He amped it up a bit. Tim, Tim. Thank you, Chris. David Carr puts it up on first down. A long pass for Steve Smith it is a little too long out of bounds. And, of course, the big story this afternoon is that David Carr, the former Number one draft pick overall, five years with Houston, starting in place of the injured Jake DeLone. And he he came in last week, and there's Jake DeLone, who's got the elbow injury, Sam. Uh, he's going to be the third quarterback today. But David Carr, they came, they got him in the game last week when Jake went down. First play, they tried to get it down the seam on a deep ball. So I think what they're trying to do is loosen up those linebackers a little bit to open some stuff underneath. Deshaun Foster gets a couple of yards. If you watched our pregame show, Jake Glazer had the story that there's a possibility that Jake DeLone might need surgery. It hasn't been defined. It hasn't been determined when. Maybe he, he won't. Right now it's a sprained right elbow, and they'll hope that uh, things will heal and that he'll be able to bounce back. But there is a chance he may need surgery. It's all surgery. about the rehab and the, and the treatment right now to see if he can respond like he has in the past. Like you said, it's an old injury. Three wide receivers in. Drew Carter, the third. Carr with time. Incomplete. Intended for Jeff King. Boy, Barrett Rood looks like he may have got away with one there. Looked like he ran up the back of Jeff King. Three and out. Tampa Bay's defense has been excellent. Another fast this start. That's what they've done all year long. They, they, I don't think they've given up a point in the first quarter defensively. They're right, and in the last two games, no points given up in the first half. Jason Baker to punt it away. Mark Jones is deep. Good punt. 
Long one. Jones backs up to his 23. Has some room. And is out of bounds. And around the 37 yard line. Jeff Garcia right back on the field. Sam, here early in the season, a couple of the intangibles that Jeff Garcia has brought to the Tampa Bay Bucks. Here you'll see him in week two against New Orleans making plays with his feet. John Gruden called that the play of the game against the Rams last week. Watch him get out of the end zone, take a shot right here, ends up with a bloody mouth over on the sidelines, back in the game. I just think the spirit and the passion. And then you saw moments ago as he takes one in with his feet, the competitive nature, everything he's brought to the Bucks has just been a highlight to this football team, not just on offense, too, on defense, Sam. He is inspired. Yeah. Even Monty Kiffin told us, said, look, he has brought the guys on defense to another level. Goes back on first down, out to Cadillac Williams, and another drop. Cadillac's second drop of the game. We go to the sideline to a man who never drops the ball or the microphone, Chris Myers. I stumble, but as long as I keep talking, Sam, on the Panthers' sideline, Julius Peppers is not in. He's meeting with a member of the medical staff, and he they looked like they were checking his pulse or his right wrist. He pointed to his chest area, and uh, obviously he has not had a great year, no sacks. He had that off-season illness when he lost some weight, but head coach John Fox said he's okay coming into the game. I know the right buttons to push, but right now, like something is bothering Julius Peppers in the follow-up for Garcia has changed the play at the line. Thank you, Chris. Three wide receivers in. Michael Pittman out of the backfield. Outside of Henyard, his fifth catch of the game. And right at the first down line. Well, it's just short as he stepped out of bounds. Just short of the first down marker. Ike Hilliard thought he had it. He's he doesn't like the placement of the ball. You know, back to Julius Peppers. I, I don't know what's wrong with him today. And as Chris said, they're checking him out, and you hate to speculate on what it might be, but there's something that's been wrong with him to start the season. And I know he had a virus over the summer, but something's not right with him when you put on the film. He's not the same player he's been over the last four or five years. Two tight ends in, ooh, and across the line comes Chris Jenkins. Offside, second offside called on Carolina. This time it's Jenkins. Encroachment, number 77, defense, five-yard penalty. First down. And you know what I'm saying, Sam, on the yeah. film with Julius Peppers. I mean, when I say he's not the same as he's been in years past, he was the most dominant player that we'd turn on the film. He'd be sideline to sideline, getting sacks. He's got more multi-sack, three-sack games than anybody in the league, knocking the ball loose, picking it off, covering receivers in the flat. He was the best player in the league up I'm, until week 10 last year. Since then, I don't know where he's been. I'm only speculating. I think there's a carryover from that illness in the summer. First down because of the penalty to Carolina second first down on penalties for the Bucks. Garcia on first down wanted to go long nobody open in trouble he throws it away as he was no foul chased to the sideline by Stanley McClover just a veteran move by Jeff Garcia breaks contained buys as much time as he can to find an open receiver knows he's out of the pocket so he can throw it anywhere with without a fear of intentional grounding and it's that experience and and it's that what we talked about earlier just his desire to do the right thing and to win John Gruden says I don't care every Sunday we got number seven on the field we got a chance to win a football game just because of the way he plays Julius Peppers back in Michael Rucker moves back to the right side at defensive end Kendall Moorhead Damian Lewis the tackles and a good run by Cadillac Williams down to the 43 yard line close to the 42. Rucker made the tackle. I want you to watch Aaron Sears right here at left guard and watch what he does right there to Damian Lewis. He's going to take him and just push him sideways. Look at the hole that opens up. Pancakes him, gives a crease for Carnell Williams to pick up six, seven yards. And the young middle linebacker, James Anderson, second year man out of Virginia Tech, who's playing in place of Dan Morgan, missed the tackle. Here's third and three. Garcia, wobbly pass incomplete. Intended for Alex Smith, and a little too high. Chris Harris and James Anderson combining on the coverage, and the Bucks will be forced to punt. I think finally, maybe a little pressure forced Jeff Garcia to get that out early, because it wasn't a good throw. And that's one that Jeff can routinely make. Rucker brought a little pressure around the corner. I think Jeff had to unload it a little before he wanted to. 
and it ended up being high and behind Alex Smith. The rookie Ryan Robinson is deep at around the 10 yard line. Josh Bidwell the punt and he's having a great start to the season. I would get the returns. Good high punt. Down there is Stovall bats it down and keeps it in the field of play. Great coverage by the Bucks. I wonder if his feet did were he, on the goal line when he touched, he touched the goal it. Looked line. like it from up here. It would be hard to tell. I thought he turned and might have been just inside. The officials discussing it. Well, let's watch his feet as he touched the ball. I think you're right. I think the right foot was up. The left foot was in the field of play when he touched it. I think that's going to be down right where the spot is. Baseball playoffs, they're coming. And Fox has the ALCS starting October 12th and then the World Series. Your Yankees won the division. Oh, no, no. Oh, they bad. won the wild card. It's okay. Deshaun Foster gets a couple of yards with Carolina pinned deep in their own territory. Second offensive possession for the Panthers. They were three and out on the first. David Carr, who played well. Substituting last week in Atlanta when Jake DeLome got injured in the third quarter. Did a good job, moved the team. There's Jake DeLome in uniform as the third quarterback, but not likely to see any action. He can't throw the ball at all. Sam, I wouldn't be surprised to see David Carr getting out here. Some edge plays for number eight. Two tight ends in. Jeff King and Christian Fortier. Nice move. Deshaun Foster with power gets to the 15 yard line. He's had a great start to the season. Had a real big game last week in Atlanta, especially in the second half. Yeah, last week he he basically finished that for the Carolina Panthers and what he was able to do in that game. First half, seven carries, 41 yards. As you said, 13 carries for 81 yards in the second half of the game. Was receiving, getting the ball in the end zone as well. Really finished it, and that's what they like to see. Run the ball to win football games at the end. Deshaun was terrific. And now they change it up with D'Angelo Williams in. Carr rolls and dumps it off to Williams. Good tackle on the play by Jermaine Phillips, the safety. The ball up close to the 20-yard line. Deshaun Foster has run very well, and everywhere he's gone, no matter what side he goes to, he's done a good job. Been versatile, right, middle, left, and I think he really thrives in this scheme that Jeff Davidson has deployed, which is the zone running scheme, where it's basically for a guy like him, you see it, make one cut, get downhill, which means go north and south on the defense, and he's been able to thrive in, in the zone scheme. Terry Colbert and Steve Smith are the wide receivers. Carr to Smith. Trying to find some blocks with one tackle, maybe got a yard on the play. Barrett Rude, the middle linebacker, made the tackle on Steve Smith, who had only one catch last week. Let's go back to Chris Myers on the sideline. And Sam on the Panthers sideline, running backs coach for Carolina, Jim Skipper, who was with the Giants when Tiki Barber corrected his fumbling problem, has worked on that with Deshaun Foster and also worked with Foster on running inside the tackles. He called Foster one of the most coachable players and said he's adapted his game to be more of a complete runner, and hopefully we'll see that today. He said that after pregame warm-ups earlier today. Three wide receivers. Deshaun Foster back in on third and four. Carr incomplete. Intended for Drew Carter. So the Carolina offense yet to get anything going. Got one first down on this possession. I will say this as bad as they've been here in the first couple of drives, it's been standard fare for the Bucks on defense. Those guys are flying around. All right, guys, those watch the now. Secondary watch players just run into the football. Jason Baker's second punt. Mark Jones is deep. Jones at the 36. Takes it with a couple of blocks. Nice return across midfield. Special teams thus far this season have been very good for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Jones with a 17 yard punt return. Jake DeLome is out on offense on the defensive side for Carolina. They're missing their key man, the middle linebacker Dan Morgan, second year man James Anderson replacing him. And that's big. Don't underestimate that. You lose your quarterback on offense and you lose your quarterback on defense too. That's Dan Morgan on that side of the ball. He plays sideline to sideline, makes big plays. And was hurt last week in Atlanta. Hamstring and leg injuries. Got like Williams. Nice hold. Here he goes. Slams right into Chris Harris and he's hurt. 
Big collision. Cadillac kind of bent his left shoulder and went in head first into Chris Harris. And Harris is a hard hitting safety. And now Cadillac Williams is hurt on the play. And John Gruden certainly cause for concern here. You know, it looked like he just slid out. Watch him step out. Now the cleat's going to give right when the hit comes and just slid and his body went over his right knee. Through the crowd there, there you oh. can see the look of pain on Cadillac Williams. His right knee is hurting badly. He will be carted off to the locker room and this looks like a bad injury. He came on the heels of a terrific run too. Just awkward, yards, yeah, yeah, just the awkward way he went down and got hit and got his right leg caught up underneath him. What a shame. You can see it here. It looks like his left cleat is going to give, right? Yeah, he just got caught. Just the way Chris Harris caught him, he was kind of in that full stride. The entire Tampa Bay team has come off their sideline across the field. And the officials are kind of holding him back. But look at this feeling and show of concern on the part of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't think I've ever seen tell me, this. Tell me this isn't a tight-knit football team. The whole team. team has come across the field to show their concern for Cadillac Williams. Well, that's their guy. I mean, you've seen it when a guy gets knocked out on the field and, and there's concern about a head injury or, or he's immobile. But here with the, it was a leg injury, but the entire team has come out you see a lot of Carolina Panthers standing in there too. If you if you try to sift through all the white jerseys, you'll see some blue ones yeah. that are in there giving their best wishes also. Stanley McClover. What a shame. They had so many high hopes for this year. And who knows the extent of the injury? It doesn't look good. McClover was a teammate of yep. Cadillac Williams at Auburn. Steve Smith, show of concern on his face Smith for an opponent. Smith probably had the best look at it as he was standing on the sidelines right in front of Carnell Williams when he went down after getting hit by Chris Harrison. You could see he was concerned right away. Cadillac Williams carted off. And you'll see Steve Smith who's right here 89 yeah. and he's calling guys over. He knew it whether he heard it or just saw it knew something there was significantly wrong with Carnell Williams. A good start to the game for Cadillac. He carried six times for 41 yards. That was an 18 yard run and the right knee gives out on the collision with Chris Harris. And now play resumes. Don't think for a minute that it won't galvanize, excuse me, those guys on the offensive side of the ball, including the coach there, John Gruden. Ernest Graham will play well. Goes down. Yeah. Ernest Graham will play well in the fourth quarter, and Atlanta's in with BJ Askew. This pass to Askew out of the backfield. Rumbles inside the 15, down to the 13 yard line. Last week, the Bucks showed their depth in their running game. They started, the starter was Cadillac. The middle relief guy was Michael Pittman. And the finisher was Ernest Graham, who scored his first two NFL touchdowns in his fourth NFL season. Came in and closed that out with style, didn't he? They ran for 182 yards as a team. Only the second time in franchise history they had three backs run for over 45 yards in the game. Graham squeezes through again and battles down to the two yard line. It's a first down. Great blocking up front. Let's get an update. Our first of the day from Kurt Menefee. All right, Sam, Bears down by 10, under a minute to go. Brian Greasy finds Desmond Clark to make it a three point game. Onside kick, the Lions recover. Casey Fitzsimmons takes it all the way back for the score. Brian Greasy's debut, three interceptions and a 10 point loss. Rex Grossman going, heck, I could have done that. Here's a Sam and Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. Lions are three and one. Ernest Graham gets down to the one yard line. Donald Penn, number 70. A backup offensive lineman was an eligible receiver at the end of the line. They have, in effect, three tight ends in there. You talked about the running backs last week and whether it was Pittman or, or uh, Graham. These guys, even Cadillac in the beginning, the one common denominator has been the offensive line and old number 35, B.J. Askew, right in front of him. And John Gruden cannot talk enough about the fullback, B.J. Askew. He is underrated. He has had a big-time year as a lead blocker for the running game. Old number 35 is 27. Grant. He's hit at the goal line, but he got across. Touchdown, Bucks. 
Ernest Graham with his third touchdown in two games. And the Bucks have opened up this game with a 13 to nothing start and about to make it 14. And not only the O-line, but you watch the tight ends, too. Watch Anthony Beck right there. He is going to drive McGlover three yards out of the hole, which gives the little opening right there for Graham, who barely made it in, taking a nice shot by Beeson. Anthony Beck, the tight end, who I guess you could call an offensive tackle, Sam, made yeah. that go. Beck is 6'5", 280. Matt Bryant's extra point is good. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, once again, for the fourth consecutive game, it looks as if they will give up no points in the first quarter. There are 48 seconds remaining. But they wanted a fast start to the game, and they lead it 14 to nothing. How much fun has John Gruden been having the last couple weeks? He's told us it's been a blast. Was Football he a different guy since talking to him yesterday? Man, he was fired up. I mean, he gave us so much stuff and said, you know, Jeff Garcia has been a big part of it, but the way the whole team has responded, you know, the offensive line is the best they've had since he's been here. Bill Muir has done a great job of getting those young guys to, to come together. And then I just think the way Garcia plays, his tenacity. Johnson, he's a lot like me. He's like a real moody dude that just has a great passion to play the game. I think has brought the spirits of old Gru Daddy up. The other thing is the depth of talent. They have rotated on both offense and defense. They have rotated players in. They've got great unity on the offensive line, maybe the best offensive line they've had in years. So a lot of things for the Tampa Bay Bucks early. They lead early in this game. There's still a long way to go. And we haven't even had a Galloway sighting yet, have no. we? No. Matt Bryant. Nick Goings from the one. And he's brought down as he crosses the 20-yard line up to the 21. NFC this afternoon, the Dallas Cowboys started slowly against the Rams and then they got it going and they won it 35 to 7 the Cowboys 4 and 0 the Rams dropped to 0 and 4 and as Brett Favre set the NFL record for career touchdown passes passing Dan Marino in Minnesota Green Bay Packers made it a great day with a 23 to 16 win and the pack the Pack four and are 4-0, and, oh, and, and Brett got the record in the Dome, found Greg Jensen. But Brett's been pretty good in that Dome now over the last three or four seasons. Four out of his last five, he's won in the Dome. Yep. David Carr's passing complete. Fans are getting a little restless here. That pass intended for the tight end, Jeff King. Well, you look at there, 20 total yards, and I think a, a majority of that came on a Deshaun Foster run. He hasn't found any rhythm at, at his position so far. There's Jake DeLome. But will not play. Boy, was he playing good up until the injury. Great start. He's thrown eight touchdown passes. Foster and Hoover in the backfield. Jeff King with tight end motions. Sean Foster, a couple of yards before he's brought down by Cato June. Cato June came over as a free agent. A good start, and he has been a, a good addition to this team. He's gotten better every week. I think that's the beauty of it, and has really leaned on, on Derek Brooks to help him out and mentor him in that area. You know, Monty said that loves the way the second level the defense is playing, the secondary. Tenard Jackson, the rookie at safety, they're, they're rolling, but he says, this group up front, these guys have got to get better if we're going to end up going where we want to go. Third and seven. Carr swings it out. D'Angelo Williams bobbles and drops it. It's incomplete. And we have come to the end of the first that quarter. Is the end of the first quarter. And it's not been a good one for the Carolina Panthers. They haven't been able to get anything going. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, another quarter with no points against, and they put two touchdowns on the board. Carolina pressure on the Panthers defense. They're down two touchdowns. They're going to be back on the field again. Well, special teams also. They can't give up better field position like they did on the last punt return here. Jason Baker's third punt. Here comes Mark Jones. Good effort across the 45-yard line. Good field position thus far in the game for the Bucks. They lead it 14 to nothing, and they have the ball when we come back. Let's find out what some of the teams that have been struggling did today. Buffalo with Trent Edwards starting at quarterback for J.P. Lossman. One, they beat the Jets. Miami 0-4. Atlanta 
went to one and three. St. Louis lost in Dallas. They're 0 and four, and New Orleans had a bye. How about Dante Culpepper yeah. in Miami for Oakland? That's right. Went back in there with the Raiders and put 35 on the board. Straight ahead, Michael Pittman on first down into Carolina territory just across the midfield line. Maki Kemoyatu made the tackle, and we go to Chris Myers. Sam, I just came out of where the area of the X-ray room is here in the stadium, and GM Bruce Allen was there along with Sharon, the mother of uh, Carnell Cadillac Williams. They have found a way to ease the pain. They are taking X-rays, and the official ruling now from the medical staff, it's a right knee sprain. He will not return today. Further test to see if there's any long-term damage. Thank you, Chris. Garcia under pressure, pass tipped, and falls incomplete. It'll bring up a third down. And you can see right where they're trying to attack, it is the middle part of that defense, the linebackers. And they ran everybody off deep that time and tried to filter the running back underneath and Ernest Graham. And had him wide open, just got batted at the last scrimmage. Carolina defense needs to do something big. They need a stop. You got to get that confidence turned around, get the momentum working a little bit in their behalf. They've been on the field way too long to start this game. Time of possession hasn't even been close. Third and five. Blitz coming. Garcia throws, finds Michael Clayton. First down at the 36 yard line. Clayton, who was in the doghouse a little bit, with John Gruden saying he's got to hold on to the football. Otherwise, he'll find himself on the bench. They love his physical play. That time, a good grab and a first down. It was a real good adjustment by Clayton and, and by Jeff Garcia to see the blitz coming right up the gut. And Clayton has had a couple of drops, as you said, but really a good adjustment that time, recognizing the blitz wide open in the middle of the field, right where the blitz came from. Garcia makes another big play. He's 8 for 13 for 86 yards. Ernest Graham, a little cutback. It's down to the 35. Damian Lewis grabbed him and brought him down. Take a look at these one-sided first quarter numbers. Tim. And every line is ridiculous. I, I mean, you, look at the pass yards right there. Look, yeah. at, look at the total yards, first downs, time of possession. Very ugly first yes. quarter for the Carolina Panthers, both sides of the ball. Talking to Jeff Garcia right here taking time and bringing the team to the line. He says John Gruden in the headset provides a lot of information. Sometimes you want to filter it out. Short drop Garcia throws and he completes it. Close to the first down line of the tight end Alex Smith. They'll spot it just short of the first down line. Chris Harris made the tackle. Have you noticed since now that they're up 14 and, and got the 14 in the first quarter that the tempo has slowed tremendously? Yeah. John Gruden and Jeff Garcia, now they're working the play clock. Up by a couple of touchdowns, still very, very early in the game, but they're letting the clock get down somewhere around 10 seconds every time before they snap the football. Third and one, two tight ends in. Clayton motions, he's a good blocker. Garcia calls time. Looked up, play time clock out. winding down, Tampa didn't Bay. like Percy what he out. saw across the line, and talks it over on the sideline. There's Mike Turgovac, the defensive coordinator. You can see that they've installed Make Kimoyatu and Chris Jenkins up front to see if they're going to run it and try to stone it. Get some momentum here. Graham behind Askew. And he's got enough for the first down. They'll spot it close to the 25-yard line. Once again, the blocking up front solid. There's an injured player down for Tampa Bay. And low man always wins in the short yardage stuff. Chris Jenkins just flies across the ball, but gets picked up by John Wade, who ends up putting him on his back and just enough of a little spot for the running back to get up there. And it looks like he did get first past the first down stick. Luke Pettigrew, the left tackle, is hurt on the play and holding his left leg. And that's a big cause for concern because he, coming in as a free agent, has really solidified the line. We've talked to a couple of the young linemen, Davin Joseph, the right guard, and Jeremy Trueblood, the right tackle, two young offensive linemen. They say they go to Pettigrew for everything. Well, he's been a pro's pro and he's been in the league a long time, knows every rusher. Uh, Jeremy Trueblood says, you know what, if I've got a question on somebody he hasn't even played against, he knows all the guy's moves and all the guy's counter moves. 
checking his right leg. We've got another update coming your way. For that, we go back to the studio to Kurt Benefee. All right, Sam, the Indianapolis Colts found themselves in a 10-0 hole against the Broncos. So what do you do? You give it to Joseph Adai. He takes it in from 14 out. It's a 10-7 ball game now. Back to Sam and Tim. Denver Broncos have beaten the defending Super Bowl champion each of the last three years. So except for when it counts. Karma going. Except for when it counts. <laughs> Pettigrew is up. I think it just scared him. Watch Chris Jenkins, who's going to be right there. And he flies across the ball. And I think what happens is Wade ends up blocking him right into the right knee. You see there of Luke Pettigrew. Just caught his knee kind of stiff and, and stuck out there and just went down on it and collapsed it. It's good to see him walk off. I think that scared him as much as anything. Uh, if he's able to come back, I would presume they'll put a brace on that right knee just to stabilize yeah, They'll him. get tape on it, brace. He used to call those the old full metal jacket. Give me the full metal jacket. That thing won't move when you put about a $25 tape job on it. Second year man Donald Penn out of Utah State comes in, number 70 to replace Luke Pettigrew. So they have three second year linemen plus one rookie. The veteran John Wade is the center. Aaron Sears is the rookie left guard. Penn is in at left tackle. First down Bucks at the 26. Garcia. Finds Ike Hinder. Lost the football. And the Panthers have it. Boy did they need that. Their sixth fumble recovery of the season. Chris Gamble tore it loose. John Gruden is upset. The reliable Ike Hilliard lost the football and the Panthers take over. A big, big defensive play. Look at him just rip that out with his right hand and it looked like looked like it was Thomas Davidson when they fell on it for the recovery. They needed that big time. John Fox's defense sixth takeaway of the season. They've all been fumbles, but it came at a very critical point. And the flea flicker, Carr, puts it up. He's got an open man. It's dropped. Steve Smith dropped it. He was wide open. We saw that same play in practice on Friday. I'm not so sure that Cato June didn't deflect the line of sight to the football getting in front of Steve Smith and that's why he dropped it. Watch 59 flash into your screen right there. And then it looked like it just hit Steve right in the hands and he, I don't know if he couldn't see it. He doesn't usually drop those. Yeah, I think it, I think his hands got in the line of sight. I'm not making excuses for Steve, but boy, he doesn't usually drop when they hit him right between the eight and the nine. Hoover and Foster in the backfield. Carr is two for eight for six yards passing. Looking for Smith again. This time, Philip Buchanan breaks it up with a good play. Good coverage by Buchanan, who's playing, starting for the injured Brian Kelly. Buchanan has played well since coming over to well, Tampa Monty Bay. Kiffin loves Philip Buchanan. He said, this guy is a cover corner, and you're going to see him matched up on Steve Smith a lot. Did not bite on the double move right there. David Carr thought he had it, and Buchanan just didn't hesitate at all, and Steve took off on that second move, trying to get down the field. 31 there was right in his hip pocket. The two Gregs, White and Peterson, are in on the defensive line for the Bucks on third and ten. Carr, pressure from Spires, runs for it. Whoa! Oh, oh, a you, flying oh, dive into the deep right. end of the pool. First down. Are you kidding me? Whoa! There's the athleticism. <laughs> David Carr says, "I'm not a feet first guy either." Watch him get lit right here. Boeing right over the top. Defenders were coming in to check his shoe size. He picks up a big time first down after the turnover by the defense. That is a big time play to keep it going and to move. You the hear chain. the stadium reaction? Everybody's going wild. First down, Carolina at the 37. Oh, that was fun to watch. Two tight ends in Jeff King and Dante Rosario. Deshaun Foster and right into Chris Hoban. Pick him up about a yard on the play. Wow, well, David Carr looking to provide a spark, much the way Jeff Garcia does for Tampa Bay. Look at this. If you're a Carolina fan, even if you're a Buck, you've got to appreciate that. Derek Brooks tries to go in and take his knees out. Carr just goes way up and over the top. And I think you said it. Those are the kind of plays Garcia and his team feed off of. Let's see if there's a response by the Carolina Panthers. 
to what David Carr just did. Brad Hoover is split out wide right, the fullback. Carr with time throws short to Smith. Hit as he catches it at the 43 by Cato June and Derek Brooks. David Carr was the first pick overall by the Houston Texans. They had high hopes. He played five years for them. He can throw the ball. His accuracy was fine, but they didn't have much of a running game. And what happened? David Carr was sacked 249 times in Houston. Listen, not easy to be the number one pick, especially of an expansion team. And felt like he had to do everything on his own. No pressure like that here in Carolina. Three wide receivers in on third and four. He goes deep for Drew Carter. Makes an adjustment, but just dropped it. As he hit the ground, the ball popped loose. Nice adjustment by Carter. He just couldn't hang on. But David Carr giving his guys a chance to make a play. And here, Carter, just terrific position by Buchanan. Carter makes a great adjustment, backdoors it, and then comes down and just can't hang on to it. The ground, that's what we were talking about earlier. The ground can easily cause an incompletion, yes. as it did there. Fourth punt of the game. But there's some life now, just in that possession. There's some life I get it. for the Carolina Panthers. Baker's punt to Mark Jones. Waits for a fair catch, got run into. There's a flag on the play. Richard Marshall, that was a late wave yeah, you, you, by Jones. Marshall hit him, and the flag went down. You have to give him an opportunity to catch the football. And there are, is no halo rule in, in pro football, which protects the return guy. But you've got to give the return guy, as a cover man, an opportunity to field it. And I think Richard Marshall jumped right in his line of sight there and got a hand on him before the ball got there. Pete Morelli, the referee, discussing it with the officials, the other officials. Richard Marshall upset. Just wondering if he got pushed in that's from what, behind. That's what John Fox is indicating. Fair catch interference. Number 31, the kicking team. 15-yard penalty. Oh. Automatic first down. That's a costly one. So much for that great field position. Here comes Marshall. Oh, not even close. Well, that's a direct hit on Mark Jones. David Carr isn't talking about the play he made, that flying leap for a first down, but uh, he was hoping it would create more of a spark for his team. What a shame that they couldn't get some points off of it and then get a penalty to give the Bucks an opportunity to get, get out of having their back against the wall. Changing the play at the line is Garcia. From the 32, it's Ernest Grant. Excuse me, Michael Pittman gets up to the 34. John Beeson, the rookie linebacker, made the tackle. Oh, we got to watch it again. David Carr is going to sniff the first down sticks and watch him get airborne. <laughs> That's a five-yard lead, at least. Hurry up, offense for the Bucks. Now Garcia once again with an audible at the line. Carolina D-line's got to get it going. Jenkins is the only one playing. Deep. And he's got Ike Hinyard. Hinyard to the 10, just short of the 10-yard line. He juggled and held on. 56-yard pickup. Wow. Ike Hinyard having himself quite a game. Well, this is what I talked about, the D-line. There's no pressure on Garcia. You cannot thread the needle any better than that. Got Hilliard right in stride, matched up on a linebacker and a safety. We talked about that as the matchup they would like. Slot receiver on backers and safeties. He got what he wanted. You couldn't make a better throw than Jeff Garcia did right there. Garcia got time. Look at once that day. Again. Look at that day. First half. Mike Hilliard. All right, guys. With a great start. Pittman and Askew in the backfield. Right it's a first and goal at the 10. And now the Bucks call another timeout. They're second. Timeout. Timeout. And we go to the sideline to Chris Myers. Chris. Well, John Gruden said in our meeting the other day that uh, he was the, the best player that he ever coached, referring to Ike Hilliard because he thought he was a guy who could be a coach. He said he's a, a coach on the field, pays attention at meetings. And it's funny, before the game, Ike Hilliard came over to Jim Skipper, who was with him in New York, when both were with the Giants. And Skipper said, are you coaching or playing today? And obviously, he's playing sore ankle and all. But Gruden likes a guy like Hilliard, who he can rely on. 
almost like a Jeff Garcia, kind of an extra coach out on the field and a real gamer, as Gruden calls him. Mike Kenyard has uh, made a remarkable turn. He did not start any games last season. This is his third year with the Bucks, but uh, it seemed like his career was kind of fading in the background that maybe he'd be the third wide receiver but when the other guys didn't step up there it Clayton is. or Stovall hit your did well there it is right there it, it, it's as much about uh, Stovall and, and Clayton not taking the job and Hilliard saying you know what I've got an opportunity here I am going to outplay these guys and did through training camp and then when he had the ankle injury was thinking about sitting out last week he said there's no way I worked so hard to garner a starting spot they'll have to carry me off the field and he got out and was able to get in and get some run Clayton is in they have three tight ends in the ball game Pittman and Askew in the backfield play fake Garcia in trouble dumps it off to Alex Smith and a good tackle by Peppers takes him down just across the 10 yard line pressure from Chris Jenkins tackle by Julius Peppers and here's Jenkins right here he's gonna be coming from his defensive tackle spot right here and watch him as he just gets up the field right in Jeff Garcia's face and I said a little while ago he's the only one playing on this defensive line and if you put on the film from the first three games he's by far playing the best out of that group and talking to him on Friday and point blank Sam he looked right at said, we don't know our identity I don't know our identity they're still trying to get it figured out now four wide receivers in for the Bucks on second and goal from the nine. Blitz coming. He gets rid of it incomplete. Richard Marshall blitzing from his cornerback position. Put the pressure on Jeff Garcia who had to get rid of it sooner than he wanted. Mike Turgovac not generally known as a blitzer as a defensive coordinator. But this time sends Richard Marshall who's right there and he's just going to get up in the crease. On Garcia, he comes unblocked. How smart is Jeff Garcia to unload that oh, thing? Yeah. But there's the Panthers, Turgovac there, the D coordinator. Panthers have had only two sacks this season. Right. They've got to find a way to get pressure. Stanley McClumber in on the defensive line. Draw play inside. Gets a couple of yards down to the seven yard line, and that's all. Good defensive series as they stop Michael Pittman and force a field goal. Now that's a big time stop right there. After the big play to Ike Hilliard gets Tampa all the way down the field. He tightened up did Carolina defensively down in the red zone. Certainly don't want to go in at half down 21 nothing. 17 nothing if he makes this field goal looks a lot better. Matt Bryant 25 yard attempt. Bidwell the holder. Andrew Economos, the long snapper, and the kick is right through. The Bucks have scored on every odd possession. Their first, third, and fifth. They have 17 points. The 56-yard pass to Ike Hilliard set up the field goal, and the Bucks have a 17 to nothing lead. Next week, NFL on Fox. Carolina will go to New Orleans, another NFC Met South matchup. Atlanta will be at Tennessee, and Seattle will be in Pittsburgh. How about that game? Later on, Tampa Bay will be in Indianapolis against the Colts. All begins with the Built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Brett Favre, big game in Minnesota. Tony Romo, a big game at home against the Rams. And Joey Harrington leading Atlanta to its first win. Of Joey the season. Harrington's starting to feel it a little bit. That's two weeks in a row where he's put up some really solid numbers for Bobby Petrino and the Falcons. Byron Leftwich over his shoulder. All right, right here, the Bucks looking to take over first place in the NFC South. They have lost seven of their last eight meetings with the Carolina Panthers. Matt Bryant's kick is short. Nick Goings comes up to the nine. And he's hit as he gets close to the 25-yard line. And that's where the Panthers will go on offense. And we go to Chris Myers. Sam, the Bucks may be up 17-0, but they are taking a physical beating. Luke Pettigrew does have a right knee sprain, so he's out for the rest of this game on the offensive line. And further tests will be run tomorrow for Carnell. Cadillac Williams, but again, an early diagnosis. He won't return today. They believe there could be ligament damage. This could be season threatening. Oh, boy. 
Bad news. Thanks for the report, Chris. Two injuries for the Bucks. They have some depth at running back. They're using a young offensive lineman to fill in for Luke Pettigrew. Now it's Carolina. Brad Hoover, the fullback, straight ahead for a couple of yards. We get an update on the San Diego Chargers and Kansas City Chiefs. Kurt Benefit. Chargers trying to avoid their third loss in four tries. LT right on through into the end zone for the five-yard score, and they lead the Chiefs 13-3 in the second quarter. Sam and Tim. Thank you, Kurt. It's been a struggle for Kansas City, that's for sure. San Diego at home lead that game badly. Carr with time, dumps it off short to Deshaun Foster. Oh, that's out. The ball came out. Foster trying to pull it back in, and it looks like he did. Now the, the Bucks are saying they got it. Javon Hay got up pointing. Barrett Rood comes with bad intentions when he tries to hit guys over the middle. He's already got two forced fumbles on the year. He's got a pick, got a fumble recovery, and when he puts his crosshairs on you to tackle you, he is trying to dislodge that football and separate you from it. He did right there on Deshaun Foster. And Foster did a good job to pull that ball back in. Watch this hit, Sam. He's already thinking, I'm getting this ball out. Spires takes him low. Bam! Oh! Mm. That popped loose and was missed by one of the Bucks. Foster and Hooper in the backfield. Third and one. Foster. Oh, they threw him back. But he got it up for the first down. Greg White with the stop. But it is enough for the first down. Carolina needs something before this half is out. We were talking about Barrett Rood. One of the leaders, the leader coming into play today in tackles. And the rookie Dwayne Jarrett is in for his first time in the NFL. He'd been inactive first three games. Second round draft pick out of USC, number 80, out to the left. David Carr. Goes to Hoover. And he's brought down by Philip Buchanan. Good tackle by Buchanan at the 39 yard line. I'm not so sure about the game plan and how they're trying to attack this cover two defense deployed by Tampa. You got to hit the middle of the field. You do it with your running backs, you get him there and that linebacker that's bailing out. You get him on the slant plays with your X and your and your Z receiver. And then of course the deep end. So that second level of the zone that go behind the linebackers in front of the safeties. Everything we've seen today has been mostly out on the edges. You got to hit those cover two holes. They haven't done it, Carolina, so far on offense. On second and seven, Carr looking for Jaron, his first NHL catch. NHL, NFL, get my sports right. <laughs> Hockey is starting. That would have been a puck, wouldn't it? His first NFL catch for Dwayne Jaron. And he and David Carr worked a lot together in preseason. They were obviously the backups. Yeah, Jake no and doubt. Steve Smith. Well, and if you watch David Carr and watch his slap shot, I mean, he can get it. Oh, sorry, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. They did have a lot of reps in the preseason together, both running with the twos. Third and one. Big play for Carolina. Deshaun Foster juggles and gets the first down. And a whole lot more. Into Tampa Bay territory to the 46 run. Dave Barber chased him out. Good run by Deshaun Foster. Almost lost the football before he got going. Really good patience following his blocker, too, and Travell Wharton, who got out and kicked it out in front of him. Deshaun Foster, you know, coming in, had an injury history right out of college. I believe he got on IR his first year and really, I think, put a bad taste in the, in the fans' mouth that this guy is injury prone. Had a knee, had a collarbone. But when he's healthy, he is really a, a very good back here for the Panthers. Two tight ends in. One of them, Jeff King, splits out wide right. Angelo Williams in the backfield takes the handoff, breaks a couple of tackles, and gets down to the 43 yard line. Pick up a three, and a late flag comes in. Holding. Holding. Number 75 off. Oh, in. oh, what a shame. Penalties on Carolina Hurts. That's on Justin Hartwig. If you watch Travell Wharton, what he did that time on Gaines Adams, and I, I pointed out Travell earlier, here he is, the left tackle. Watch what he does to the right defensive end here on this run. First, there's just pure strength, jacking him outside. Now watch him finish it. Oh, wow. 
would not be good in the film room on Monday with the fellas if you're Gaines Adams. Four penalties in the game, all of them to Carolina. Sets the Panthers back to the 44 yard line. Dante Rosario, the rookie out of Oregon, is in as one of the two tight ends. Gaines Adams in on the defensive line for Tampa Bay. D'Angelo Williams, nothing there. Good job up front by the Bucks defense. You know, I, I, again, the plan of attack with all the runs going sideways, with all the stuff out to the perimeter. Historically, if you attack Tampa Bay defensively, you do it right up the gut, right down the middle of the field. Try to take advantage of your size advantage on the interior with Bridges, Hartwig, and Wall against Javon Hay and, and Hovan and, and Barrett Rood. Everything has gone sideways, which gives these guys the opportunity to go sideways and use their speed. Foster back in, gets a few yards up to the 48-yard line. Fans don't like the play calling here as we come to the two-minute warning. It's all Tampa Bay thus far in the first half. They have a 17 to nothing lead. Everything's great on these numbers for the defense except that one right there, the zero sacks. I'm sure Monty Kiffin wants that number to go up, but as they're up 14 points here, or 17, excuse me, you're going to see a lot of the cover too, which is going to give them a few running lanes inside for Carolina because you'll keep that safety deep in coverage back here with the two deep safeties. Three wide receivers in. They spread the offense. Empty backfield. On third and 16, Carr rolling, looking downfield. Nobody open. He gets rid of it, throwing it out of bounds. He's outside the pocket, so no intentional grounding, but nothing to be gained, and Carolina will have to kick it away. Well, and if you watch, there's only three guys rushing, so there's eight guys in coverage, and there's just nowhere to go with the ball. And you got two deep safeties back in the cover, two protecting everything deep, and then you've got six defenders underneath that are rallying up in their zones. There was nowhere for David Carr to go with the football. Mark Jones is back at his 10-yard line, fifth punt of the game for Jason Baker. with time Jones able to return trying to get outside spun around and set out of bounds just short of the 20 yard line in the NFL today one of the big stories Rex Grossman benched by the Bears and replaced by Brian Greasy Grossman had been making bad mistakes putting it up Brian Greasy Nice touchdown pass there to Moussin Mohamed. The Bears were up at that point. But later on, there were a couple of interceptions, a couple of turnovers, and the Lions beat the Bears 37 to 27. Highlights, stats, and a whole lot more on the Visa Halftime Report. What a coming big, up next. What a big win for Rod Marinelli and the yes. Detroit Lions. Finally, a meaningful game and being 3-1 and one and beating Chicago when it means something. We'll see them in Washington, you and I, next week. Nice run by Michael Pittman. Hard runner gets a first down up at the 30-yard line. Once again, Donald Penn, second-year man out of Utah State, is filling in for Luke Pettigrew in that offensive line, which has Jeremy Trueblood, 24 years old, David Joseph, 23, Aaron Sears, 22, and Donald Penn, 24, has done a nice job. And it's just going to go right up and just follow the lead blocker. There it is, B.J. Askew again, blocking Mike Rucker. And Pittman just goes off his rear end and busts up for 10 plus in a first down. Draw play. And once again, it's Pittman. Uh, this time it's Ernest Graham coming across the 35, pick up a five on the play. Graham in his fourth year out of Florida. It's been a long haul for him. He hasn't uh, had much of an opportunity, but uh, suddenly. He just burst onto the scene with a great fourth quarter last week. Two big touchdowns against the Rams. And I got to tell you again, that offensive line, I think, has just gotten better and better every week. And if they can get a pad like they have here in terms of points, this is what Gruden loves to do. There's Bill Muir, the offensive coordinator and line coach. He loves to get those big fellas mashing and finishing up. There's Graham. Nice hole. And a first down up at the 44-yard line. I mean, if you're a linebacker for Carolina, wouldn't you just focus and make your read on number 35, B.J. Askew? Because wherever he goes, that football's going right behind him. Well, they just can, haven't been able to stop it. You can hear the crowd reaction here in Charlotte. The hometown Carolina Panthers 
who have lost their last three home games dating back to last season and trailing 17 to nothing at halftime. Coming up next, it's the Visa Halftime Report. Don't go away. The Visa Halftime Report is sponsored by Visa, proud sponsor of the NFL. Life takes Visa. And we welcome you to the Visa Halftime Report. Kurt Benefee along with Terry Howie and Jimmy. And right now, it's all Tampa Bay so far. 17 to nothing over the Carolina Panthers. Elsewhere, Seattle and San Francisco. And San Francisco trying to win for the third straight game. Alex Smith, though, in trouble. Gets sacked by Rocky Bernard. And Smith had to leave the game with an injured shoulder. Trent Dilfer is in. And... He's not helping them on defense by any means. Bobby Ingram scores for the Seahawks, and they have a 13-0 lead. That game right now just approaching halftime. Elsewhere, the Pittsburgh Steelers lead Arizona 7-0 in that one. The Indianapolis Colts and Denver Broncos at a good 14-13. That one late in the second quarter. And Kansas City, oh, having more trouble against San Diego down by a touchdown. <laughs> Terry. All right, El Matador. <laughs> Tony Romo. 15-yard touchdown, Stanford. Three touchdown passes on the day. One running. Cowboys up 14 to 7 over the visiting St. Louis Rams. Romo back out of the pocket, goes to the outside. Patrick Creighton, he takes it. He goes to the house. 184 yards receiving on the day. Two touchdowns for Creighton. Cowboys awfully impressive today as they win 35 to 7 over the visiting St. Louis Rams. All right, there he is, Brett Favre. Greatest quarterback I've ever seen play in this game. Fired back, 16-yard touchdown pass. Quick post to Greg Jennings, 421st touchdown pass of his career. Eclipses Dan Marino's NFL record of 420. We got us a new leader, folks, and there he is, history making. There's his wife, Deanna, in the stand. Congratulations, Brett, from all of us at Fox. Second half, far back. Well, just to make sure, pump, holds the safety, corner gets beat, he points the finger at the safety. It's all good. It's a touchdown to James Jones, the rookie. All right, Pack go to 4 0 for the first time since 1998. And in the process, Favre adds to the touchdown record, eclipsing Marino. Also adds to his all time win record. Don't forget that. But he had a chance to celebrate with the boys in the locker room afterwards. All time NFL touchdown king. Congratulations. I appreciate it, but I'd much rather win. This feels a hell of a lot better. And I uh, hope you guys can play as long as I have and, and enjoy the things. But I love playing on the team so much. I do. And let's keep this going. Let's go. Chicago's got a new quarterback. There he is, Brian Greasy, the 10 year veteran. Far the Bears watches Kevin Jones and the line going off tackle, five yard touchdown. Extra point is blocked. 30 to 20 lines over the Bears. Back comes Greasy, finds Desmond Clark. Hooks up in the, at the goal line, one yard touchdown. 20, it's 30 27 Lions. Onside kick by the Bears. Picked up by Casey Fitzsimmons of the Lions. Takes it back 41 yards for the touchdown. Lions take their record to 3 and 1. Remember last year, they only won three games. 37 27 is your final. And break up the Cleveland Browns. They roll over the Ravens to go to 2 and 2. Buffalo rides Trent Edwards in his NFL debut as a starter to a victory over the Jets. The Falcons get two touchdown passes from Joey Harrington to knock off the Texans. And Dante Culpepper, three touchdown runs, two touchdown passes in his return to Miami as the Raiders blow out the Dolphins. Get you updated on Major League Baseball. The San Diego Padres lose in Milwaukee, which means that if Colorado wins, they will force a one-game playoff for the wild card. Right now, in the bottom of the eighth, Rockies are tied with the Diamondbacks. The East is all settled in the National League. The Mets get blown out by the Marlins, while the Philadelphia Phillies win against the Nationals, meaning the Phillies are the champions of the NL East. All right, Howie. Well, Let's talk a little bit about this game right here. I'm puzzled. Uh, Carolina at home, division game, the division lead on the line. They've been listless, lethargic. You fill in the superlative. Tampa Bay, you know, you talk about Dallas being here. Green Bay's a notch below, a distant notch below. And maybe Tampa Bay with John Gruden. You look at the people he's had success with at quarterback. Brad Johnson, Rich Gannon out in Oakland, and now Garcia. Smart. Quarterbacks not necessarily take the ball down the field, but that can grasp his offense. Managing the game well, you think? I'm not saying managing. That ticks you quarterbacks off. <laughs> good to hear from you, Jimmy. And we don't want to do We're that. Good stuff. Half a deep good stuff. Second half coming your way after this. Enter Visa's inside. 
battle for first place in the NFC South in Tampa Bay, taking a 17 to nothing lead into the second half. And Tim, it's three straight games that Tampa Bay has not given up a point in the first half this season. Their well, defense playing well. That's got to be the story. As good as Jeff Garcia has been in this football game offensively, they've been better on defense and have not allowed a point. 26 passing yards they've given up and gave up in that first half to, to David Carr and Steve Smith. Steve Smith has really done nothing. Had a drop early in the game, had an opportunity to make a play or two, didn't. Give a lot of credit to that Bucks defense. They're rallying the linebackers, the secondary. Those guys are flying around. 77 yards of total offense they give up in the first half. That's winning style defense. Set to start the second half. Matt Bryan will kick off. Carolina needs something to change the flow of this game. Nick Goings from the goal line. And he is hit hard as he got up to the 15. Quincy Black, the rookie linebacker out of New Mexico with the big hit. And we go to the big hitter, Chris Myers. <laughs> well, uh, John Gruden's team delivering the big hits, but there was a smile beneath his grimace. But he said, I'm looking at 30 minutes of football and then getting the heck out of here. He's concerned about further injury to his team, especially on the offensive line and with the Cadillac Williams. He did say they would keep the heat and the pressure on David Carr and hope to bring more of that. John Fox said the Bucks aren't doing anything we haven't seen before and didn't expect. Just said our team isn't doing anything and our guys are going to hear about it and continue to hear about it until they change things. Thank you, Chris. They start from the 15. Deshaun Foster cuts it back. Jermaine Phillips got a piece of him. And got a good pickup, about six on the play. I think one thing, that, it, despite the score being 17 0, that has irritated John Fox, I think, first of all, the, the effort by his defensive front four, with the exception of Chris Jenkins. I thought Chris had a good first half, but beyond that, his front four on defense really did nothing in terms of wreaking havoc versus the runner, getting pressure on Garcia in the pass game. And then offensively, I think there's just been too much out to the perimeter. They got to start working the ball between the numbers and the hash if they want to have success against this defense. Two tight ends in, Rosario, one of them split out. Foster looking for an opening, takes it around the corner. Nice run by Deshaun Foster. First down up at the 34 yard line. Philip Buchanan chased him out. 13 yard pickup on the play. I think another thing when you look at the first half, especially when you have a backup quarterback in, your stars better perform. And I had mentioned Steve Smith, nothing defensively. Julius Peppers, a couple of tackles, had the penalty. He really didn't have an impact on the game in the right. first half. And he usually plays well count against on your the stars. Bucks. That's right. You got to count on those guys at a home game division, both two and one. Smith and, time game. Smith and Colbert, the wideouts. They go outside of Jeff King. That was a badly thrown pass by David Carr. David Carr in the first half, six for 15 for 26 yards, his longest completion, seven yards to Deshaun Foster. Now, he, he kind of hit or miss with his accuracy, and maybe those gloves are playing into it. I don't know, but he did have three drops in the first half also, right. and one big one by Steve Smith. So it hasn't all been, hasn't all been David Carr. But that third down he picked up, vaulting through the air in the first half. D'Angelo Williams in it, the running back position. Jeff King, the tight end motions. Car rolls, chased by Greg White. White's got him. Greg White continues to impress the first year man out of Minnesota. He was a linebacker in college. We've talked about him in recent weeks. An Arena Football League star getting a chance with the Bucks and making the most of it. And I'm not so, so sure that ends up being a sack, but here he is right here on the right end. And watch his speed and his ability to close. David Carr is a terrific athlete, plays that right. Now Carr thinks he can just bide his time to get out there and get some yards, and Greg White just got on his horse and ran him down. And you're right, no sack. It's a one-yard pickup, but a good play by White. Here's third and nine. Car blitz from the outside, gets rid of it. Brad Hooper stumbles, gets a first down. Powers his way up close to midfield. Important play by the fullback. Brad Hooper, a pickup of 15 on a third and nine. Panthers needed that one. They did. They caught him on a blitz on the front side, and then on the back side, the, or on the back side, excuse me, and then on the front side, the backers were all filing out deep. Hoover was able to get in there, stumbled when he first caught it, but Old Hoob, when all else fails, just put your head down and run him over. And it's Jeff Davidson, the offensive coordinator here with the Carolina Panthers. First down at the 49 yard line, officially a 14 yard pickup on the last play. Foster hit by Rude and then brought down. 
finished off by Derek Brooks. You know, everybody made a big deal a couple of weeks ago when Brooks came out for a couple of plays. He's not coming out. He's playing great. He's playing he's terrific. Now, when he does come out for a play or two, it's on nickel, and, and it's a little later in the game, and they keep Cato June in. And, and asking Derek about that, who said he never came off the field, even as a rookie since 1995. This is the first year, maybe one, two, three plays, he gets off for Cato June. He says, hey, I just want to win. So it really doesn't bother him. Second and nine. Short drop by Carr. And a pass broken up, intended for Kerry Colbert, broken up by Philip Buchanan. He's playing well today. Here he is matched up on Kerry Colbert, who's going to run the slant pass. The crowd wanted some pass interference. It looked like he was on his back as he reached in and, and batted the ball down. I think the Colbert and the fans wanted a flag on the play. Patrick Chakora, number 54, in for his first action this season. Played with Denver the last two seasons. He's a pass rushing specialist. And he's coming from the outside. He hit Carr as he threw. So, first play of the season for Patrick Chakora. He came firing in to pressure Carr. Watch him right here. He's going to come from the right side. He's just going to put the speed rush around Travell Wharton. He's going to dip the shoulder right there, stay on his feet, and then hit Carr just as he's unloading. Chakora played a couple of years in Minnesota, then went to Denver and signed here as a pass rusher for the Bucks. Sixth punt of the game for Jason Baker. Once again, Tampa's defense comes up strong. High punt, fair catch away for by Mark Jones. And he takes it at the 14-yard line. Bucks defense doing a good job. Talked about Steve Smith not having an impact. I mean, you can read his lips right there. He's talking to somebody upstairs, and he's just saying, get me the dang football. A couple of catches in the football game, and they've done a terrific job of limiting him his ability to make the big play. Ernest Graham carries for a couple of yards up to the 17 yard line it's been a great day for the Bucks but the another big factor though has been the loss of two key players Cadillac Williams a knee injury and Luke Pettigrew the starting left tackle out with a knee injury and it certainly looked worse for Cardinal Cadillac Williams as the cart had to come out and get him so we'll keep our fingers crossed Sam that it's not something that's going to be a season ender Ball up at the 18-yard line. Michael Pittman in the backfield. Damian Lewis in on the defensive line, number 92 for the Panthers. Short drop, Garcia goes to the tight end. Alex Smith wrestling his way up to the 25-yard line and enough for the first down. Nice play by Smith, his fourth catch of the game. The Bucks and, and Jeff Garcia are so on top of their game right now. And if you watch how the, the blitz came here, Garcia hits it right where the soft spot is. Here's the blitz. These guys are going to come from over here. And what happens, he finds this little zone, a little hot route to unload it to Alex Smith. Another solid game for Jeff Garcia. We're not going to fool him too many times from the neck up. Very, very intelligent quarterback. Headwise. Pittman takes it outside and a big gainer. Michael Pittman races down the sideline. He may have surprised them with his speed as he gets into Carolina territory and out of bounds at the 47-yard line. He picked up 28 on the play. Looks like all the blue jerseys just get pinned in here, and Pittman's just going to bounce it outside. Wow. I don't know job. what Thomas Davis is doing right there. He kept his outside leverage free. He just lost vision of the running back. Thomas Davis was in perfect position to file off and make the play. He never saw the ball carrier Pittman when he bounced it outside. We've been watching the matchup of the second year right tackle out of Boston College, Jeremy Trueblood against Julius Peppers. Trueblood is winning that battle. Not even close. Garcia falls forward on the play. And if you if you looked at Trueblood last year and had one start against Julius Peppers, I think Pep rolled up three sacks yeah. on him. And this, this guy right here said the difference, Jeremy Trueblood, from last year to this year, he said it's not even close. There became such a, a change in mentality when thinking last year, I hope I can do it, to where now he sees himself on film every week doing it. So now he knows he can do it, and he's got the confidence to go out and thrive. And he's winning that battle versus number 90 today. We talked about the credit he gave to Pedigree. He also credits John Wade with solidifying the offensive line. Garcia to Ernest Graham. Nice cutback. 
Graham spins across the 40 and down close to the 38 yard line. John Beeson makes the stop, but a nice pickup out of the backfield by Ernest Graham. Talking true blood, talking the rest of the offensive line. You know, something really stuck out with me in talking to Monty Kiffin. He said, This is the best offensive line group we've had since I've been here. Now, Monty's been there a long time. Yeah. It's not like he came in with John Gruden. Monty has a history in Tampa, some pretty good football teams. He said, This O line is better than any group they've ever lined up with on Sundays. Third and a yard and a half for the Bucks. Two tight ends. Graham, first down at the 35. Look at the forward thrust by the offensive line. I mean, they just shoved Carolina's D-line back. And they'll tell you they drafted Aaron Sears and got these guys in here to, to beat guys like the Carolina Panthers. Watch 78 lead up in the hole, and they're just going to follow him. 335, 340 pounds, sifting through the traffic, getting push on blue jerseys, and they're rolling out six yards of pop today on the ground. Grinding this one out. This drive started from the 14. It's now at the Carolina 35. Pittman. Nothing there. Good play led by Chris Jenkins on the defensive line. The Panthers had been noted for their defense for years with Pro Bowl players like Julius Peppers, like Chris Jenkins, Michael Rucker. But the defensive spark has not been there this season. They're missing their middle linebacker, starting middle linebacker Dan Morgan out with an injury. Chris Jenkins told us on Friday, Sam, and, and it kind of kind of caught me by surprise. Says, you know, I got I look around, I wonder how much guys wanted around here. Think about that statement. Garcia being rushed. Got away from Damian Lewis, chased by Jenkins, and now he throws it away incomplete. Good pressure that time. Damian Lewis, the first man in on Garcia, just missed him. And then Jenkins chased him toward the sideline. How many guys just missed Jeff Garcia? We saw Leonard Little just miss him a few times last week and just keeping plays alive with his feet. Not only once, but twice right there. Damian Lewis, then Chris Jenkins, he outruns him and saves his team about 11 yards, not taking the sack. Panthers have had only two sacks this season. Five defensive backs in, Richard Marshall, the nickel back. On defense for the Panthers. Pittman in the backfield on third and ten. Garcia has time. Now being pressured by Thomas Davis, and the pass is incomplete. And Davis lowers the boom on Garcia. And that was a good knockdown. They brought a couple of linebackers that time. James Anderson comes up the gut. He's picked up by Pittman, and then Thomas Davis flashes in from the outside. I think that's got to be one of the first times Garcia's been put on his back all day. I think you're right. Second punt of the game for Josh Bidwell. Ryan Robinson is standing inside his 10-yard line. And you've noticed Mike Turgovac now here in the third quarter is starting to dial up the blitz to try to help that front four get pressure on the quarterback. Bidwell. Up high and into the end zone for the touchback. 35 yard punt, but it nets only 15. Carolina's got to get something going on offense now that the defense did its job. It was the injured Jake DeLome calming down Steve Smith moments ago saying, get me the ball, let's get the ball downfield, trying to dial up for help. One of the offensive linemen came over to David Carr and said, we'll give you protection, get the ball to Steve. Sam, Tim? Thank you, Chris. Carr rolls on first down, then runs, and is chased out of bounds, picking up a yard. Potato June was there to pop him, and Philip Buchanan as well. They have not lost a step without Brian Kelly out there today. Here you see Philip Buchanan matched up on Steve Smith. He's going to read David Carr flowing this way. Watch him get off and get in on the tackle to push Carr out of bounds. And Monty Kiffin was saying yesterday that in today's football, the way offenses are run, your third quarterback is a starter. And let's remember Buchanan was a first-round draft choice for Gruden out in Oakland, so they know his talents well. Second and nine, nothing for Deshaun Foster. Good work up front, led by Kevin Carter. Javon Hay does a little celebrating. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting for that. <laughs> that kind of went over my head for a second. Start exploiting the middle of the field if you're the Carolina Panthers. You can't say it enough. 
Tampa Bay is sitting in the cover two, which means two deep safeties. They will run their middle backer out of there in the middle if you send someone deep as a teaser route, and you can find action in the middle of the field. They have not attacked that area. Three wide receivers and Jeff King. They go draw play up the middle with Deshaun Foster. He fumbles, diving for the ball. Buchanan missed it. And they scramble for the football. The Bucks pointing. They, they have it. They recover it. Well, guess who? Barrett Rood is in on the tackle once again. And Tenard Jackson, I think the rookie safety, comes in and puts his helmet on it to clean it out Greg and Pe knock the ball loose. And the rookie Greg Peterson out of North Carolina Central recovers the fumble. Deshaun Foster fumbles. Peterson finds it at the bottom of the pile. Forced fumble, NFL career for the rookie Tenard Jackson well, out of Syracuse. Up, you know, first three games, quietly was having a big, big impact on the defense. Now today he's making some noise. Big time hit, knocking that ball out. Michael Pittman breaking tackles, pulling tacklers with him. Down to the 17-yard line, a first down. And you know, Monty Kiffin historically does not like to start rookies. Watch 28 come in and put his helmet right on the pig skin. Bam, right there, knocks it out. I guess he's taking up what Monty and Gruden and the fellows are preaching. If it wiggles, hit it. I think it was wiggling that time, and Denard Jackson came in and separated that football from Deshaun Foster. Seventh takeaway this season for the Bucks. their third fumble recovery. Pittman and Askew in the backfield. First and 10 at the Carolina 17-yard line. Pittman gets a yard on the play. John Beeson makes another tackle. Defense, we talked about it. They have made physical play the mantra of this team. If it wiggles, hit it, and that's what they do. Well, if, if you remember how Tampa has played defense, even back when Tony Dungy was here, when John Drew first got here, it was about those body rocking style hits. They swarm to the ball, they force the ball loose, and they've changed the momentum of games against New Orleans, against the Rams, and again today with some physical play. And it's not just one or two guys. You'll see six, seven white jerseys around the ball. Pittman cuts it back. And then he is taken down as he gets close to the 12-yard line. Once again, John Beeson, he may be the best defender on the field for Carolina. He's a young player. He's young. He's aggressive. The young doesn't get him in trouble. I think the aggressive does sometimes. And he's got a very, very bright future down here. He's your premier run and hit weak side linebacker in a 4-3 defense. That's the guy you want going sideline to sideline, and he's got that ability. Bucks have to get to the seven-yard line for a first down. They have two tight ends in. Askew and Graham in the backfield. Garcia, wide open. First down. He does it again. He saw everything wide open as he sent everybody out. And Garcia, with the run for the first down, Ernest Graham gave him a block to spring him. Well, a couple of things here. You, you watch right here. Julius Peppers is going to come up and inside, and then D. Cooper comes this way. They just run right in between them. See, D. Cooper took it upfield. The tight end, you see in the back of your screen, took the linebackers deep, which gave space for Jeff Garcia. He hit that right on the bubble, right where the hole was on the defense. Buck shift. First and goal from the four. Graham. Fights his way down to the two yard line. Tackled by Maki Moyatu. made the tackle. I don't know what's going on with this Carolina football team. I, I really don't. When you look at their roster, when you look at their personnel, when you look at their coaching staff of John Fox, Mike Turgovac, the defensive coordinator, these guys are better than this. They are. We saw in week one, they were pretty darn good against the Rams defensively now for three weeks in a row. They've been almost off. Matt Blair is in as an eligible on the right side. Graham goes to the one yard line and inside the one. It'll bring up a third and goal for the Bucks. There's Mike Turgovac, the defensive coordinator of the Panthers. But the big players have not come up with the big plays. They have not dominated the line of scrimmage. No, they that, haven't. And I think when you look at the rush yards, I think it's clear that they miss Dan Morgan, number 55, in the middle of that defense. 
running sideline to sideline against the running backs. Matt Lair is in as an eligible on the right side. He's a backup offensive lineman. Graham trying to pull his way across the goal line. There's no signal yet. I don't think you can give him that. You may review it, but not from the, the naked eye did he cross the plane right there. Kimoyatu did a terrific job of stuffing that up right, the, right up the gut. It's number 99. You'll see the right guard, Davin Joseph, get pushed back. You saw it right there. That was the guy that made that happen. He took Jav Davin Joseph two yards into the backfield right there. And there was nowhere for Graham to get up in the crease. And the Bucks will go for it on fourth and half a yard. The ball is inside the one. Askew and Graham in the backfield. And now oh, Jeff Garcia out. wants to talk it over with head coach John Gruden. As he says of John Gruden, he's head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterbacks coach, and the bad scientist on offense. Carolina's defense looking for a big stop. The Bucks are half a yard away. Power against power. Graham and Askew in the backfield. Graham to the goal line. And it looks like he was stopped. Maake Kemoyatu, number 99, leading the way to stop the Bucks inches away from the goal line. Mike Turbo Turkovac congratulates his defensive line. They came up big. So a big stop for Carolina. Inches away from their goal line. Can it spark the offense? Straight ahead to Sean Foster to get away from the goal line. He picked up a yard. Let's listen to this battle in the trenches. Wow. Look at those two deep tackles. Look at Rucker. Look at 93 there. Tell me he's not jacked and wanting to get back in this game. Okay, Mayatu, 99, Chris Jenkins. Terrific job, both of them staying on their feet. You know, they say down on the goal line, low man wins. Yeah. Same the high guy won. They both went over the top. Nile Diggs coming in from the backside linebacker spot. Awesome. On second down, Foster again gets his way out to the five yard line. A little breathing room, but it brings up a third and five. If they're going to get back into this football game, and still now, 17 points. Is not a whole bunch in the National Football League. You got to get the ball to number 89. Steve Smith has got to rise up and have a big time fourth quarter. Final big routes, seconds. crossing routes, stuff over the middle of the field. Give him an opportunity to catch and run after the catch. Last play in the third quarter. Oh. And they didn't get it off. Time ran out. So they will go down to the other side of the stadium. We have come to the end of the third quarter the Carolina Panthers defense showed some light but their offense has yet to get anything going and the Bucks lead 17 to nothing Sam Rosen Tim Ryan Chris Myers here in Charlotte North Carolina as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers take a 17 nothing lead into the fourth quarter Panthers with a third and a long five have three wide receivers in. Drew Carter, the third. Sammy Davison is a fifth defensive back for Tampa Bay. David Carr. Big rush. In trouble. He throws it away. Big time pressure by Greg Spires, who was questionable coming into the game. And once again, the Panthers are forced to punt. So the defense had a good stop, but the offense with David Carr at the helm has not been able to get much going. Well, he looked like he had his first read there and then got off of it and, and was flushed out of the pocket, and then the pressure was able to converge on him. Carr just 7 for 20 for 40 yards in the game. Well, that defense has been terrific today for Tampa Bay. Jason Baker's seventh punt, another good one. Oh, he's got a strong leg. Look at Jones back up to the 32. So room to come back. Nice return. Jason Kyle takes him down. That's the long snapper. Brings him down in midfield. An 18-yard return for Jones. Here's for the third time in nine possessions. Start in Carolina territory. John Wade, the center. 
has been the glue for the offensive line, which lost their veteran left tackle, Luke Pettigrew. Michael Pittman in the backfield. Galloway in motion. Galloway said no factor in the game. Look at Pittman turning the corner, and he rips off enough for, for a first down. They haven't needed Joey Galloway today. They've really leaned on the slot receiver early. I kill you, it was everywhere in the right. first half of the game. And then it's just been the running game. They've been just pounding an atom, owning time of possession, playing keep away, chewing up the clock. They've leaned on that offensive line all day long. Michael Pittman, 10 carries, 75 yards. Picked up 11 on the last play. You know, Bucks. historically, they have not ran the ball very good against the Tampa Bay Bucks. The running game has been solid. He's up, he's up. Pittman and Askew. This is Pittman. Bounced it outside, gets inside the 35-yard line. Let's check in what happened on in the pennant races today. Kurt? Well, Sam, I know you want to set your baseball playoff calendar, but not just yet. The Colorado Rockies hold on, beat Arizona. San Diego lost. That means a one-game playoff for the wild card. San Diego at Colorado tomorrow afternoon. Back to Sam and Tim. But the Mets lost. Oh. What a collapse. They had a seven-game lead with 17 games to go, and they lost. The Phillies beat them out. Unbelievable. That baseball's a finicky sport, isn't it, Sam? But the Yankees are Oh, yeah. Get that caveat. <laughs> Pittman straight ahead. Don't forget ALCS October the 12th right here on Fox in the World Series. Right here on Fox, Mr. Myers, our football man, is going to do some baseball. And Going to leave the us. ALCS in the uh, World Series. We'll get him back after that. You know, you talk Galloway, you talk running game, and, and the Tampa Bay Bucks historically, if you look at it, as I said a minute ago, have not run the ball good against Carolina. And John Gruden told us that. So that's why we've got these offensive linemen in here to match up against this defensive line. Look at those numbers. I say so far so good today for the running game. Three wideouts, two running backs on third and five. Everybody out. Garcia is trying. Throw it away. There was that blitz from Richard Marshall again. They haven't gotten him for a sack, but they have pressured him a couple of times, and a couple of times it's been Marshall with good speed blitzing from his defensive back. I think back. that's the game plan right now is to send Marshall as a blitzer. And you'll see him here, and again, he's going to come right in the open spot. We'll show blitz, show blitz. He's going to wait for it to open, and he's going to go try to finish. But we were wondering, he was out there for the whole drive. What's the extra defensive back doing in there? He came in for John Beeson. I think the thought process is to get him on the blitz, get a fast blitzer, a guy in the secondary blitzing Jeff Garcia. At least he can try to finish because of Garcia's speed and his feet. Rather than go for a long field goal, the Bucks will punt it. And they take a delay of game penalty here. Their first penalty of the game for the Bucks. And I think that's pretty wise by Turgovac is to send a blitzer that can actually finish it. And your defensive lineman, not too many guys are going to run down Jeff Garcia. Five-yard penalty on the delay of game. There is Mike Turgovac. He's trying to find a way to put some pressure on, but the Bucks got the lead early, and they have controlled the game. Ryan Robinson is standing inside his 10-yard line for Carolina. Bidwell kicks it high and short. Robinson, fair catch at the 14-yard line. Did exactly what he wanted to do. Kicked it high, kept it in the field of play, and a fair catch. Boy mouth. Now I know those kids at halftime were having the uh, a lot of fun, and we know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are having a lot of fun. There's not not much fun yeah, not here good for there. the Carolina Panthers, and that's Mike Wall, who's got uh, a problem with his left arm as they flex the arm. Now, I would imagine he's already got something working with that elbow. When you see that black neoprene sleeve, most guys are wearing that for some type of support on the elbow. And you know as I do, those interior offensive linemen, the bone spurs, the elbow injuries from all the punching, all the pushing, all the stuff that they do. And Wall is one well, of the best. Something working. He's one of the best in the league. Yeah, Pro Bowl left guard goes off. 
for at least a play. Jeff Hangartner comes in to replace him, number and, 63. And Wall really has played good, if you ask Jeff Davidson. Yeah, which guys up front are really playing well? And he'll tell you number 68 is first three games of the season is back to that Pro Bowl level after that shoulder injury last year. Hoover and Foster in the backfield. Panthers start from the 15. David Carr just one for five, passing in the second half. Puts it up, almost intercepted. Cato June, Steve Smith, the intended receiver, has caught only two passes for five yards in the game. He caught one pass for 10 yards last week. Well, they've got the concepts right. That's just individually a very good play by by uh, Cato June. And those are the dig routes. Those are the stuff behind the linebackers in front of the safeties where you want to hit Steve Smith. You're right. As he usually has bounce back games after a poor performance. The defense is limited, really. Any significant touches for him. Tight end King motions. Car to put it up. In trouble, they got him. First sack of the game. Javon Hay. Hey, hey, hey. His second sack of the season. That was again no rhythm. There hasn't been rhythm all day long. Hay gets up there, but I would call that a coverage sack. There would Car just held on to the football. Couldn't find anybody down the field unloaded to. And you know how it works, and you've got a saying, or I had a saying in college football, and I still use it now with D linemen to DBs. It's pressure, pick, cover, sack. You get pressure, we'll get picks on the back end. You get some coverage, we'll get some pressure on the front end and get some sacks. Mike Wall is back in and left guard, and motion is D'Angelo Williams. Car pressure, throwing deep, intercepted Jermaine Phillips. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come up with their fifth interception of the season. Big time pressure forced that turnover. Well, it goes to what I just said. The play before, it was pressure, pick, cover, sack. The play before, they had the coverage, they got the sacks. That time, they got the pressure, and they got the pick. And right they, in David Carr's face, he throws it up. INT, Jermaine Phillips. Bucks start from the Panthers, 28, quick outside of Joey Galloway. I think that Garcia said, you know what, I forgot my guy, Galloway. I gotta, gotta get him the ball, his first catch of the game. Ball's down at the 21 yard line. And they use Galloway a lot like they use Steve Smith over there for, for the Carolina Panthers. Look at his numbers today versus the last five games versus Tampa Bay. Look at that. Unbelievable. Oh, good job by the Bucks. Second turnover of the game has led to this. The Bucks at the 21 on second and three. Ernest Graham. It's about a yard to the 20 yard line. Bucks satisfied to control the ball right now. Early in the game, Jeff Garcia was getting the ball to Ike Hilliard. Outside in other games, look at the wide receivers. Jericho Cotri of the Jets in a losing performance, 106 yards. Patrick Creighton, a winning performance for Dallas. Seven catches, two touchdowns. Andre Davis, Houston lost in Atlanta. Five catches, 170. You yards. gotta love the emergence of Patrick Creighton this year with Terry Glenn and his injury. It hasn't just been today. Creighton's been playing well all season. There's a third and two. And timeout called by Jeff Garcia. Garcia talks things over with John Gruden. The Bucks have the big lead. Tonight, the wildest shows on earth are on Fox with King of the Hill, an hour of The Simpsons, followed by an all new King of the Hill and a hilarious new family guy. The can't miss season premiere of American Dad. What do they call that? Animation domination. <laughs> All begins at 7, 6 Central on Fox. Garcia's pass incomplete. A dejected Steve Smith on the sideline. Carolina, last time they were shut out in 2 against Atlanta here. November. Now, I, I would say there's still a lot of ball left there in number 89 with 10 minutes to go in this game. Remember Houston a couple of weeks ago, that touchdown that he was able to squeeze out at the end of that game, right. breaking about 30 tackles. Ooh. Matt Bryant, 38-yard field goal try. Out of Josh Pitbull's hold, and it's right through. Bryant having himself a good season. He's missed only once this year. And 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with a 20 to nothing lead. Chris, what do you have? Well, you know, we talked at the top of the broadcast about Jeff Garcia. That's why the, the Bucs came in here with a swagger. And the Gruden Garcia, they're still working through, as Gruden said, the relationship over the headset. You know, the plays sent in by the coach and offensive coordinator, John Gruden. I talked to Rich Gannon, who, of course, worked with Gruden in Oakland, and he said not only does Gruden send in the play, but he also tells you why he's calling that play so that you know if you need to make the adjustment as the quarterback, you understand it. And he gives you reminders, sometimes more than you need. Tell this guy over here, remind the left tackle to do this. And as Garcia told us, sometimes, uh, Tim and Sam, he, he's like, enough already. Just give me the play. i got to run the offense. But they're working it out pretty well today. I think it's a little more than that, Chris. I think sometimes it's all right. Shut up. Ah. I've had enough. Jeff Garcia wanted to sign with Tampa Bay in 2004. They didn't have money room on the cap. Well, they had a meeting at like 2 in the morning. Jeff flew himself to Tampa Bay. Remember that? Yeah, he says they still owe money for that plane ticket. Yeah. So they were sitting up in, in Gruden's office, 2 in the morning, talking. Gruden said we had about 500000 Cleveland had about $5 million to give him in signing bonus. And matter of fact, Jeff said he almost did go with his heart. For one reason or another, he ended up in Cleveland. But you know what he did say is he thinks Gruden's getting a better product now than he would have got four years ago. D'Angelo Williams on the kickoff return here, trying to get something going. He slips a couple of tackles. Nice return. And he goes out of bounds across the 35. Let's check out what's happening in Pittsburgh, Arizona. Kurt Menefee. Well, some excitement in Arizona. Kurt Warner is now in a quarterback for the bench, Matt Leinert. But they're getting help from a rookie, Steve Breeston, the fifth round pick. Takes it all the way back, 73 yards for the score, and the Cardinals had their first punt return for a touchdown since 1993, and the lead, Sam and Tim. There you go. Thanks, Kurt. That's your national fake-out lead. That's huh? it. That's it. Pittsburgh the story right there with Kenny Wisenhunt, the Arizona head coach, and, of course, comes over from Pittsburgh as their old coordinator in the offseason. David Carr sends everybody out. Throws short. It's all crossed over the drop. Fourth drop of the game. It's been, the Panthers. it's been bad for David Carr today. It really has. He hasn't looked good. I don't think a game plan has been conducive to his style of play. I don't think they've called up the right plays in terms of how to attack this defense, but he hasn't had help. You saw a drop there. Saw drops early in the first half. Steve Smith on a big one. So when there has been an opportunity for guys to make a play on the receiving end, they have not been able to close it out and finish. Three wide receivers. Everybody out. Pressure on Carr. And he throws it away. And complete. Pressure on the outside from Gaines Adams. I think one thing Monty's got to be pleased with here in the end of this game is they haven't blitzed and they've got pressure with their front four. Gaines Adams is a big story. The youngster brought in as the first round draft pick to supply some pressure and he's still learning and the feeling is he's getting better with each week but he's still a long ways away from starting every down. Well that's because he's just really a pass rusher now because he doesn't need to go in and, and as you said he's so green that run pass combinations and, and what what it's going to be has confused him so right now it's all about just rushing the pass on third and ten short to foster with a blocker in front of him but he's brought down from behind nice tackle on the play by greg peterson short of the first down that's four down territory you got to go i mean you you don't punt this 9 45 remaining the rookie pass rushers, Greg White's done a nice job, Greg Peterson, and Gaines Adams. Here's fourth and a couple. Carr puts it up deep, and nobody there. I don't get it. What was that? I don't get it. I mean, it was 10 yards beyond Drew Carter. Tactical on error. fourth and two. By the quarterback. But wasn't that the play? Well, you, you got to get a first down right play? there. No, I, I don't know what he did, but you got to get a first down there. You don't try to take a deep ball versus double coverage down the sideline at fourth and three when nobody's there. There's Drew Carter, and there's Steve Smith. He's trying to get it to what? Oh, I think he thought uh, Steve Smith was going deep on the takeoff route. And I think he thought Steve Smith was going to go deep on the takeoff route down the sidelines. Steve broke it off past the first down stick. Carr threw it deep, and there was nobody there. Wow. Well, the offense will have to pull itself together for Carolina. They've got to go to New Orleans next week and play a team that uh, has this week off. They go straight ahead with Michael Pittman for a couple of yards down to the 42, close to the 41 yard line. And I think coming into the game today with David Carr and where he's been and getting the opportunity to start with what you know I thought was a good O-line playing good, big time playmakers. 
it could have gone either way. Carr could have came in and thrown for 350 and, and four touchdowns. Or he could have done this. 8 of 26, 48 yards, a 24 rating. It doesn't get any worse than that. Give some credit to the defense as well for the Bucks. They've been all over it, but I think the expectation for David Carr was not what they ended up in at first here today in Carolina. On second down, it's Pittman again. And into Deke Cooper, but fights his way down across the 35-yard line. About a half yard short of the first down. You Donald know, Penn with a nice block. Penn has been playing in place of Luke Pettigrew, who went out with a knee injury, and has done a nice job at the left tackle spot. And they haven't dropped off Sam in the rush numbers. Look at this. Look at this this season, and look what they've been able to do today. Last 90, two 87, 182, and 181 so far today. They're leaning on that offensive line. And you're right about Penn. They haven't dropped the ball at all in the oh. rush game since he's come in for Pettigrew, and he must be able to play. They make Anthony Davis, who's got a bunch of stars, inactive on game day. Pittman again, ran into Chris Jenkins. No moving, big Chris. He stopped him short of the first down. <laughs> and Jenkins gets up, says something to Pittman. Pittman says, nice play. And now you better say nice play to about 350 pounds of fury right there. He's played good today. I've watched Chris Jenkins most of the afternoon, and of that group up front, when you talk about the front seven for Carolina, he's been the best player on the field. Carolina stops the clock, 7.50 to go. Next week, NFL on Fox. Carolina will go to New Orleans. Chris Myers will call that game. Atlanta will be in Tennessee. Seattle is at Pittsburgh. Later in the day, Tampa Bay is at Indianapolis. The Colts are leading Denver 35 to 20, about to go 4-0. The Bucks will be three and one unless Carolina can find a way to score three touchdowns in less than eight minutes. Hold on a minute. Back to Myers. He's doing that game next week. Chris He's Myers. in the booth play by play guy. Yes, sir. How many times do you think he'll throw it down to the sideline? I maybe he'll throw it to us. Let's go to <laughs> Tim and Sam on the sideline. Say the over and under is one hey, on that. Yeah, yeah. Here's Josh Bidwell to punt it for the fourth time in the game. This one will bounce. No. Ah, oh, yes. It will bounce past Maurice Stovall. He tried to catch it at the one yard line. He almost had it. He was there, but he missed it. And it's a touchback. Huh, Chris, how many times? The over and over, uh, under and over is one on how well, many times you'll throw it to the sideline guy. Well, Tim, if, if I can run down onto the sideline real quick, I'll throw it to myself. <laughs> yeah, you but, but the truth is I'm doing the game with Brian Baldinger, so I won't have to say very much. I think Chris <laughs> is calling the play-by-play -play from the sideline. Yes, it'll just, I'll be down. I'll... <laughs> turn, turn oh. around, Chris. We want to see you. Right there, there you are. Oh, where there are we? Are. That's good. <laughs> Boy, the hair looks good. I'm just enjoying the ball game. Listen, do you guys pick on me for this no reason? A good day. I mean, is the game that slow that you got to say beat me up? Carr fires to Jeff King for a first down. They finally found the tight end who had a big game last week. First catch of the day for Jeff King. Now that right there is what they should have been doing all day. Wait until seven and a half to go in the fourth quarter to use the tight end versus the cover two defense over the middle. No huddle, hurry up offense, two timeouts left. Oh, that he didn't see. Derek Brooks cutting in front of D'Angelo Williams, but it's incomplete. Let's check out the Chiefs and the Chargers. Kurt Menefee. Look out for the Chiefs. Damon Heward finds Dwayne Bowe in the first round pick out of LSU. Takes him 51 yards, seven catches, 150 yards, and a touchdown for Bowe. Oh, yeah, and today his LSU alma mater, the number one team in the AP poll. Good day for Bo, Sam. Thank you, Kurt. Oh, what's going on with San Diego? Far in trouble, throws it away as he was pressured on the play by Kevin Carter, the veteran defensive end who's still looking for two more sacks to reach the magical 100 mark. And he is roasted, I think, in 14 games over the years. 18 and a half sacks for Kevin yeah. Carter against the Carolina Panthers. Now here's the third and long coming up. Third and ten. The Bucks defense. Another outstanding performance. Three wide receivers handed off to D'Angelo Williams, and Greg White makes the tackle at the 38 yard line six short, six yards short of the first down and let's see John Fox says stay on and go for it you got to and they've got to come up with a better play than they did on fourth down last How time. about a seven yard completion 
something just good enough to move the chains. Let's see what they come up with. Car with time. And it finds to Carr. First down. That's the play he wanted. Carter coming across the middle. Barrett Rude took him down. But the ball's up the 48 yard line of first down. As they keep things alive with six and a half minutes to go. But they need something in a hurry. And it's tough to do with the defenders back 20 yards. Carr trying to run away from Greg White, who grabbed his jersey and wouldn't let go. This play by Greg White. Real nice play by Greg White, who I think was getting held at the same time. Holding, number 70. 10 yard penalty, still first down. Yep. Travell Wharton called for the hold. And they will bring them back. Chris, what do you have on Greg White? Well, you've, you've told the story about the Arena League. He, he and Javon Hay have actually become buddies. I was talking to both of them b before the game and kind of revived careers. And, and White said that it was out in a parking lot after six tries, seven different training camps, that he had to be tough. He was pretty much given up on the NFL. But uh, Jay Gruden, John's brother with the Orlando Arena League team, it was the Saints called. Said, look, if anybody's going to get you, we should get you. Give us a shot. We'll give you a chance to play. He was a late add to the roster. And Monty Kiffin said, now he's good enough to start for us. Gordon didn't want his buddy Sean Payton to get him. Carr dropping it off. He found Steve Smith. Smith stepped out of bounds at the 47-yard line. A little soft pass over the defender dropped into the arms of Steve Smith. Really a nice touch pass. Carr's going to break contain. Look out. He's just going to drop it over the defender there. I believe it was Cato June right to Stevie Smith who one handed it and then stepped out before he could lay out past the, the first down mark. On second down, Carr pressured and he's down. And that was Patrick Chakwara with his first appearance of the season this afternoon and he comes up with a sack I don't understand I mean again with the way they're calling the plays everything is deep and I know you want to get down and get yourself into the end zone but you got to move it slowly to to the helmet by Greg Peterson referee Pete Morelli took a look no flag it's a sack back to back sack that should be a flag Pete Morelli missed one right there you can't grab a quarterback by the helmet and rip him down to the ground and I know they're letting the brush of the helmet and a tap of the helmet that that rule has changed this year right the referee has the discretion to let that go but that was just a to me looked like a pure grab the helmet and throw him to the ground that to me has got to be a penalty all kinds of confusion here with guys coming on and off the punting unit was coming on. Carolina may have too many men on the field here. They definitely have too many men on the field. They have to use a timeout. Timeout, Carolina, second. Team well, that was mass out. confusion we'll down there. Timeout. Tomorrow night's a big night on Fox. Eight o'clock is prison uh -oh. break, which you know I never miss. And now a new show, which has become a good one, is Kville right after that prison is, break. Yeah, that is good. That takes place in New Orleans. Good action show that you might want to tune in and check out. I think you'll enjoy it. Prison break at 8 Eastern and at 9 Kville on Fox. Prison breaks get nasty. I mean, Michael is in jail. They got to get him out within a couple of days. I mean, it's nasty. Eighth punt of the game for Jason Baker. Oh, I love it. Only plays of Carolina lately have led to good pressure by the Bucks. We got a couple of sacks. Fair catch by Mark Jones at the nine-yard line. 51-yard punt. Well, coming into play today, there were five teams, three and oh. Wade Phillips in the Dallas Cowboys, five and oh. Mike McCarthy in the Packers, excuse me, four and oh. Mike McCarthy, four and oh. Pittsburgh is trailing in Arizona. Tony Dungy and the Colts are leading at home against Denver. And Bill Belichick and his New England Patriots play Cincinnati tomorrow night. And that team right there is on a big time mission. They score 38 points every Holy game. Holy smokes. I think they're giving up about 10 a game, if that, on oh, defense. They're, they're really, they are really good. Colts are looking good. They got off to a slow start today. And a big one with Tampa Bay next week in Indianapolis. Ernest Graham in the backfield with B.J. Askew. Two tight ends in. 
Graham. He's pushed back. Four and a half minutes and counting in the game as the Bucks look to go three and one, and we look to go to Chris. Well, Sam, you talked about a number of Buck players with Tim who have filled their role today. Jeremiah Trotter, the former All Pro Eagle linebacker who has been signed by the Bucks, hasn't played, inactive again, but was asked on Friday by John Gruden to just address the team. And he, he said he was surprised, but he talked to the team about some people being destined for success and other people have to be determined for success. And he also said that even if you start from scratch, you have to keep scratching to reach the top the players seem to respond John Gruden called it one of the best speeches he's ever heard and he said this is a guy who's not even playing for us not yet Graham on the carry spins up to the 20 the 15 yard line we asked John Gruden about Jeremiah Trotter and asked him if there was a role for him on the team and he said right now there isn't but there will be down the road well, they're using he's a quality player yeah and they're using him in the meeting room as you said mentoring some of the younger guys which I think at times is overrated in, in pro football but I will tell you as the season goes on if they incur an injury at linebacker and, and Jeremiah Trotter may not be a perfect fit in the cover two and all the stuff they ask for that buck two linebacker to do and dropping out in coverage and running deep down the middle of the field but I guarantee you that you get some heavy alignments in there, you get some short yardage stuff, some goal line stuff, they'll find a role for Jeremiah Trotter. Well, they did sustain two injuries, but not to the linebacker position that they have to be concerned about. Cadillac Williams, a knee injury, that looks like it could be serious. And uh, the left tackle, Luke Pettigrew, went out with a knee injury. Don't know, we'll know more about that tomorrow and this upcoming week. Now, there is some depth on the offensive line. We're seeing it with Donald Penn, the Matt Lair they've got, and inactive today, Anthony Davis and Dan Benning. So they've got some depth on the offensive line. And Graham and Pittman backing up Cadillac Williams have shown that they can do a reasonably good job. Uh, next week, they will certainly be tested. When the Bucks meet the Colts what on did, Fox. What did Monty tell us yesterday? I don't know if I'm going to make that one. <laughs> I, may, I may not show up for that game up in Indianapolis. <laughs> Call in sick, right? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, a 320 three going. right there. The Bucks started the season in Seattle, lost 20 to 6, and now have. There's come the back Colt with three right there. straight wins. There's Cato June. Yep. Fifth punt of the game by Josh Bidwell. And on the return, Ryan Robinson is brought down. Nice tackle by Kennard Jackson. There's Monty Kiffin, whose defense has been just superb. He's got to be so pleased. Look at the total yards. They ended up getting sacks on the quarterback. They had the takeaways. Third down was terrific. He's got these guys humming. And, and I think the thing he'll be most pleased with is that his front four did make some plays today when you look at the defensive line. He'll also be pleased that his son, Lane Kiffin, is 2-2 two and two with the Oakland Raiders. Tell me he doesn't start glowing when you start talking oh, about Lane Kiffin. <laughs> very, very happy as Oakland defeated Miami in Miami, 35-17. David Carr. Pressure, flag on the play, out to Jeff Keane. And he is out of bounds up near midfield, but that may come back. Carolina Panthers holding number 75 offense 10 yard penalty still first down that's the center Justin Hartwig called for the hold six penalties in the game Carolina's got to find a way to regroup we don't know how long Jake DeLobe will be out so David Carr they've got to count on him they thought he would be an upgrade in the backup quarterback position and he hasn't been today that's just the bottom line and the Bucks have taken him out of his game they've done good stuff but you got to wonder, I, I, I think, especially now that Jake is off the offense. We talked about Chris Jenkins earlier, not knowing the identity of the defense. Now with David Carr, I don't think they know what type of team they are offensively. Unable to get the ball to Steve Smith throughout the game today. Carr being pressured, goes outside to Carr. And he is brought down by Rondé Barber. They are doing everything that the cover two defense wants you to do. Really, they will drop every, drop seven guys back, Force you to throw the out routes and then rally up and make the tackle. We've seen it all day, and David Carr has just stepped right into that cover two trap. And they've never gotten the ground game going because they've fallen behind early. Sean Foster, 62 yards, and pass batted in the air, caught by Steve Smith. And he runs out of bounds right at the first down. No, let's see, it's at the 40 yard line. My apologies. First down 
Markers at midfield, pick up a three on the play. Heads up play by Steve Smith. Clock stops. 216 remaining. We've seen that a couple of times with David Carr getting the ball batted at the line of scrimmage. And you have to wonder if it's at that release, that ear release, that sidearm release that forces him. Yeah. And I know historically he has gotten balls batted down when he tries to fire him over the offensive line. Smith, four catches, but only 22 yards. Carr is 13 for 33 for only 95 yards. And that completion is to Kerry Colbert, a first down just across midfield. As we're coming down to the two minute warning, pickup of 11 for the first down. And the clock stops at two minutes. The Carolina is down by 20 as David Carr tries to get it going. Around the league today, Ronnie Brown of Miami rushed for 134 yards and a touchdown. Losing cause, Adrian Peterson, a losing cause, Justin Fargus. He's not even the wow. starter. Lamont Jordan had been rolling for him, and Fargus just takes off Ooh. today. Nice job out of the backfield. D'Angelo Williams out of bounds, short of the 40 yard line at the 42. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In control of this game, took the opening kickoff, marked 71 yards, and Jeff Garcia ran it in. One from one yard out for the touchdown. Bucks had the lead, and they have played a near perfect game. Second and two for the Panthers. Car being blitzed from the outside, steps up. Got the first down, slides at around the 38-yard line. Maybe the 37 is where they'll spot it. The Panthers have not won at home since last November. Two losses last season at home. And it looks to be the first two games of this season. Far rolling. Across the line of scrimmage, tiptoes the sideline. Javon Hay chased him out of bounds. Let's check in at what's happening in San Diego. Go back to Kurt Menefee. Boy, did we all overrate the Chargers? That's a question right now. Derek Johnson, the Chief, come in, forces the fumble by Phillip Rivers. Tyron Brackenridge takes it 50 yards for the score, and the Chiefs lead it 30 to 16. Uh, don't think Howie isn't giving Jimmy a hard time about his boy North Sam. Oh boy, oh boy, I bet he is. You're right, Kurt. Things have really changed in San Diego. They had a players only meeting this week. Obviously, it didn't work. You never know in this sport. The National Fake You Out League, from one year to the next, personality of your team changes big time. Hooks up with Kerry Colbert out of bounds at the 26 yard line, a first down for Carolina. With a minute 15 to go, they're just trying to uh, play for a score. And not get shut out. Next week, Carolina at New Orleans, Tampa Bay at Indianapolis. Cato June said it's going to be fun to get back up in there in the That's dome right. plate against the old team. He said it was just very emotional, just going around in the offseason with the guys that they won the Super Bowl with. Carr dumps it off to Deshaun Foster. Gets out of bounds at the 23-yard line. Paul Buchanan got a piece of him. And we're down to a minute 10. And and shutouts are big at any level. I mean, you start in Pop Warner, and if you have an opportunity to get a shutout, you play till the final gun. And that's what's going to happen here. The, a shutout is important to Monty Kiffin and the defense. The win is everything, and they'll feel great either way. But if they can walk out of here shutting the team out in their own backyard, you've done something in pro football. Bucks last shutout, December 5th. At Tampa, at home against Atlanta, December 5th, 2004. Their last shutout on the road, opening day of the 2003 season in Philadelphia. Park. Steve Smith holds on at the 14-yard line. Sammy Davis with the coverage. Five catches in the game for Steve Smith. But nothing of significance. Well, I think too little too late in terms of how they're attacking these guys. Now they're starting to pick up yards, move the down ball down the field by hitting the middle of the field. Carr standing in, dumps it off through the hands of Deshaun Foster. 45 seconds to go. Tampa Bay will go to 3-1. and one. And you talk about the elements. We talked about Tampa Bay on the road had lost nine of their last ten. 
against Carolina lost seven of their last eight and John Gruden said the difference now is we've got Jeff Garcia there it is Jeff Garcia in the defense and the young guys on defense that have grown up in about three games easy, not easy, just today is that defense been surprisingly easy. good they have been up for the last three weeks in a row on second down Carr rolling and looking to the end zone and throws for Drew Carter a single touchdown Carter made the, day, the diving grab and looked like he dragged his feet so with 37 seconds remaining in the game, the oh, Carolina man. Panthers. Oh, it's called back. Oh. It's called back. Still second down. Jordan Gross was holding. A flag on the play. It's the third holding call we've seen on the offensive line today. Give credit again to the Bucks up front with that front four. Jordan Gross looking up. You just look to the right side here. 69 holding. There's the hold by Travell Ward, oh, yeah. and then there's the hold on Gaines Adams by Jordan Gross. Could have called either tackle on that one. A great catch Time by Drew out. Carter Time is negated. Second team timeout. And the will Bucks be a call a timeout. 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 Today's game produced by Mike Burks, directed by Rich Russo. Our associate director is Tom Yoey. Broadcast yeah, associate is Justin yeah, Deutsch. Technical yeah, producer is Frank Phillips. The pregame show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. The senior producer is Bill Brown. The executive producers of Fox Sports, Red Gorin and David Hill. You know, I'm not surprised at the way Tampa played today, having been with them the last couple of weeks, and Jeff Garcia and knowing his magic. Um, defensively, I thought they would play well. And collectively, it was a great effort. Special teams, offense, defense. They only had one penalty during the course of the game. Really a complete team victory. I am surprised at how Carolina played this football game today. We saw extensive penalties. The tell them it doesn't mean something to, oh, to both boy. of those guys right there. The penalties at the worst opportune times. The game plan, how to attack the, the defense by Tampa Bay. Defensively, not being able to stop the run for the Carolina Panthers. Those things surprise me. See the young man in the towel there? That's Chris Sims standing next to Jeff Garcia, the young quarterback who's still trying to rehab and come back from the spleen surgery a year ago. <laughs> David Carr with a long throw to the end zone again, and this one is incomplete. 31 seconds remaining, and we talked about what's up with, with Chris Sims, with a head coach. Well, he's still on the team. He's the number four quarterback. And John Gruden says he will be a quarterback again in this league and will have an impact. But where it will be, who knows? Listen, it's about the injury. And the injury happened against these Carolina Panthers. You rupture your spleen and have a catastrophic injury like that and then try to fight your way back into the, into the league and onto the football field. It's about his injury, Sam. He's not ready. He's not right yet. Garcia brings a lot of leadership and veteran leadership in watching him. When Sims went out last year, it was the rookie, Bruce Krankowski, that was in. Now they've got Garcia to lead the team. Angelo Williams is going to make it in. There goes the shutout. The diehard Carolina fans can cheer. Monty Kiffin is upset. He wanted that shutout. Of course he did. I told you it means something. Those defensive coordinators just caught him perfectly on the screen. A couple of good blocks. D'Angelo splits the crease and scampers in for the touch. He wants his guys to play to the very last second. D'Angelo Williams with a touchdown with 23 seconds remaining. John Casey for the extra point. And it's good. So the Carolina Panthers are able to march down the field and on the little pass, swing pass to D'Angelo Williams, they're able to put it in the end zone. John Gruden just congratulating his defense for their overall game. You, know, you wonder what Monty is. I know he's irritated they didn't get the shutout, but I wonder if he's irritated at what he called on defense and it's set up perfectly for what they wanted to run on that screen pass and got exploited. Now you get your your hands team out there if you're John Gruden and Richard Bisaccia, the special teams coordinator, try to corral this onside kick. Congratulations all around. But he's still got that look of, oh man, I see the to... steam coming out. Look. Yeah. Out of his ears. All right, the Panthers will tee it up. 
First touchdown in eight quarters given up by the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Rams to three points last week. There's the onside. It's bouncing around and it bounces out of bounds. And the Bucks will get the ball. And time to run out the clock. And for Carolina, time to regroup. They've got to find Kick something here. Bounds. By rule, the ball will be placed at the spot he went out of bounds. Pretty smart play by old Pittman right there. Not even trying to field it. Just bat it out of bounds. Knowing that you get one shot at it, it goes out of bounds that the Bucks would get possession. Heads up, smart play. Carolina will go to two and two. They will play in New Orleans next week in another important division game. As the Saints, who are 0-3, have had this week off and will be waiting. The Bucks will go to Indianapolis on a three-game winning streak. To play the Colts, who won today and are 4-0. The Colts beat Denver 38-20. Another win for Jeff Garcia. Another game with no interceptions thrown. And for John Gruden, his team through the first quarter of the NFL season is one of the surprise teams in the NFL. Jeff Garcia's magic, the defense, desire to get to the football, the special teams rally, and that was the story of this football game today. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeat the Carolina Panthers 20-7. Thanks to Gary Lynn and Emmett McGuire here in the booth. We'll be right back.